of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District uh, Articles of Agreement Review Committee at 632, 631. Whoops, I don't want to go there. I want, there you go. Thank you. That's where I want to be. All right. We'll call to order any uh, adjustments to the agenda. It's pretty straightforward, but anyway, uh, but that doesn't mean articles added or anything like that. That's just if we need to, uh, I figure what we have here is covers, you know, what says prepare for our said board. Oh, there you are, Justine. Hello. Hi. Can you, can you speak? I can speak. Zach uh, was done early, so I'm here in full. Yay. So glad to have you. So uh, yep. glad to have you. Good. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Justine, any adjustments to the agenda? No. No, thank you. Charity, any adjustments to the agenda? No, I'm good. Yeah, we can do hand signals, too. You can say, I'm good. Um, uh, Tim, any adjustments to the agenda? I'm good. Good, thank you. Um, then I think we're we'll moving on to approve uh, minutes from Monday, December 21st, 2020 minutes. And I believe, Charity, you had some corrections? Um, not necessarily corrections. I just think we need to clarify a couple things a little better, maybe. Okay. Uh, so on the very first page, uh, the first piece that's written in blue, it says that Charity asked for clarification on dates. I don't mm -hmm. believe I asked for clarification on dates. I was asking for clarification on that there would be a, a definitive way to differentiate the vote on this subject matter it is being done as a special school board meeting versus part of town meeting based on the information Dina had given to us during the conversation. So dates, I think, sums it up too small. Yeah. Uh, it's not declarative enough. Yeah, what do you, uh, Charity asked for clarification. Can we just say Charity asked for clarification? I mean, is that, do you need some more there? I think we need to put in the, the fact that it's going to be a special school board meeting held in within the context of the town meetings. Got you. In two um, separate days because Rochester votes differently than Stockbridge. So. Discussed as well as the two towns voting on different days, one day apart. Um, dates and special school board meeting. Yes. Being held during town meeting within the That's two sounds. towns. Uh, good. Let's let's write that in. Are you working? What are you working on, Charity? Writing that down <laughs> <laughs> with a with a pen or a pencil. Uh, pencil. Yes. No, I love it. Well, Mary Ann Martin taught me well. Uh huh. Well, we'll send it by mule, so the the rider will be up to pick it up. <laughs> Um, uh, um, uh, I think we can be a little informal on this. So we all okay with the change? Let's indicate by thumbs up, Justine. Tim, you okay with that change? Yep. Good. Um, and then, and what you'll do, Charity, I think what you'll do is you'll email these back with the changes. You'll email this back to Christy. So okay. Then she can post it. Um, and then you're next. You had another. Uh, yep. The next one is, I believe, the third section of blue writing. It says Charity asked if the changes would be clearly visible to voters. Dina responded she believes it would be too long for voters to understand. I believe that was Justine's question. Uh, where? I'm kind of waiting for Justine to remind me if that was her. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, section. It's a right of the blue right above number three. Yes. Blue writing right. So it's actually still in section two. 
the last section it says uh it's the last blue right before number three i i don't think that was my question um okay I did clara i did talk later on about the concept but um i didn't ask initially if i understood what she was representing during this time um i was trying to get it to to work out for everyone later on but that's not my question Hmm. Okay. My question. So leave it as is. I guess I'm unclear okay? what, what it was, but that's fine. Okay. I think that was what she was referring to. It would be crossed out. Um, as, as we see in a draft tonight, it's the, the old language is crossed out and the new language is written in. Oh, okay. So maybe, uh, yeah. And yeah, then I, I that, that makes sense. I did ask the question of would there be a visibility for the voters? So yeah. it does, okay. Thank you. Good, good. No, this is, this is exactly what we're supposed to do with the minutes. We're supposed to go through them and make sure they represent what happened. So this is right on. Uh, do you have any more? Um, yep, the next blue section down, um, I, if there's a way that we could put in, instead of it saying in the second line of the blue section, discussions that were brought to the BOE discussion, uh, it wasn't just the discussions. I felt we had an obligation to go back to looking at the dis everything from the 706 study through the BOE presentation, not just what happened at the BOE presentation. But I don't know if we actually need to rewrite that or anything at all, because two sections down, two paragraphs down, still in the blue, she does mention that Tim and I both suggest going back to 706 meeting information. So I don't know. I guess that first paragraph just confused me a little. Sure to know. Sure. I, I think it, I think it's pretty clear to me. Um, I mean, I know that was for me, this has been a process of, as we talked about it, I understood it further, you know, um, in the sense that initially I thought it was just the discussions at the BOE presentation and didn't realize that there was a lot talked about in the preparation meetings before that. So in some ways, I think if they read the whole section, as you say, um, okay. It feel I feel like it 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 tells it tells the story. Okay. Um, but but I'm happy to I'm if you know as I say I'm happy to change it. Um, and and we know that's I mean you know you and I charity you know after we've discussed we we know that's we know at what level we want to go back and do that. But I th I think it's I think it's clear Justine. What do you think? Do you think it's sort of clear what we're talking about? I think it's clear what we're talking about. I'm actually not exactly sure what what charity would is really asking right now. I, I can't. It wasn't a BOE. Pre it wasn't a BOE discussion. It was a BOE presentation. I guess is my issue. Oh, okay. So do we just change the word BOE discussion to BOE presentation? Yes. Yes. I okay. think yes. she refers to presentation. Or, yes. Yeah. I I think that's what's intended in that. Okay. That's my perspective. Yeah. So I'll just change that one word. Um, yeah. Hold on. My fingers are stuck. <laughs> um, um, and I don't know if this one's going to be a big thing or not. So the very last page, it is the third paragraph down reads campus and grade rearrangement language that is used that the board only can decide what kids go where, i.e. grade separation. Where, and where then are, we are we in four, section four? Uh, page four, so it's... Yep, page four, third paragraph. Yeah. Um, Yes, the where it says the board should lose that power and go to the voters. I don't know that I like that. That's not exactly what 
the context of that conversation led to. I feel like I said that. That was, that's uh, section 6C. Or article 6C. And I brought that up several times. I think that was my statement. And I think um, I feel that the language in 6C states that it's the board's discretion. Oh. Um, 6C oh. actually discusses real property. Oh, yep. I'm getting mixed up. I see what you mean. Yep, grade separation, the board should lose power. I don't know that the board should lose power was the context of the conversation. I think it was just that the subject matter needed to be discussed more to involve the communities in it. Not that we said the board should lose the power. I, I think we didn't get that far in that conversation mm. to make that assumption. I just think that statement is a little heavy for the fact that in my opinion, we only treaded lightly on this subject. Mm -hmm. I would agree with the statement you just made, Charity, in that statement is a little heavy and I feel like it was more of a discussion that it's not only the board's choice. Or Should we change it to a discussion would ha was had regarding consideration of the board's future I don't know. Uh, I don't um, know. How about, how, about something, how about something to the effect of discussion was had a, over um, the mechanism for grade change within the district? Does that sound? I'm fine with that. Mechanism is always a, a good word because it does talk about the whole way things happen. You okay with that, Tim? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was a little concerned with how that was being talked about at the last meeting, but um, just because we haven't really heard from the principals about how they're going to go forward with that. And that that really isn't what we're supposed to be doing anyway. I I, I well, is it, how it would be a parent concern for sure. But okay. Um, well, I think it was brought up as I, my memory. I thought it was brought up as um, because we did. There's several things on our list tonight that are not actually articles, but are potential suggested articles. Um, for for change that I think are worth discussing. So, what it's it's on it's on our list. So we can save it till then, and we can we can talk about whether it's our jurisdiction to talk about it or not. Um, I think that's that's fair a fair discussion for any any of these things we're talking about. Um, I realize. Oh, I realize I made a mistake again. We do not have a secretary once again. Um, do you want to try Justine this time? I, um, I can. I, I, I know. I, <laughs> I will try my best to do a good job at that. Well, yes. you did. You did the first time. Oh yeah, um, I just don't have a lot of time to write it up in general. No, no, no. I, uh, I understand. About. I can do um, it. Send. Send me your roughest notes, and I think if we go around between the three of us, we can get something. Four of I us, can we can it. get. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I yep. just think, yeah, I, I, I was Pat was very good for us, but I noticed she didn't volunteer to do it again. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, I think it probably is better if we keep it in our committee. Sure. Uh, Charity, you had your hand up. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm. So what I wrote down, make sure everyone's okay with it. Discussion was had for mechanism of potential campus grade change. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. Hey, yeah. that's it for me. Okay. Good. Um, uh, um, uh, I'll make a motion to accept. I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes as amended of the December twenty second, twenty first um, meeting uh, minutes. 
Somebody move I make that. that motion. Thank you. Somebody second it for us, please. Second. Thank you, Justine. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Good. All right. Let's move on here. Okay, so let's bring up this. Uh, did you all get my email with the hot spots? Yep. The, the list of hot spots? Uh, um, not sure. Topic articles. What? What? Oh, hold on a sec. It's not telling me I can get it. Let me try again. When did you send it, Ethan? Oh, did you guys not get it? I don't believe I've gotten anything with that. Uh, just send it. Well, I'll... we got a few from you in the last few days. Well, I just sent a, I sent a couple things. I just sent the um, uh, the amendment that Dina drafted. I sent a explanation of eighty percent, which was something Joanne brought up last time. Let me just see. Sorry, I I thought I was all prepared here. Well, I mean, what happened to it then? Oh, was it in dress? No. Nope. Sorry. Uh, let me find this for us so we can. Uh... Oh, here it is. Okay, good. So it's there. Let me send it again. Is it the one talking about the 51% stuff? Hold on a sec. Let me just get this done and I'll respond here. All right. I just sent it to you again. Yep. Oh, that's funny. I don't know what I did with it then. I did it about three hours ago. Okay. Um, this is the list. Sorry, I, I was hoping to get it out to you uh, early enough so you could at least uh, look over it a little bit, but take some time now. Did you send, did you send it to us, Ethan? Yeah. And it has in my sent folder, AOA Hot Topics is what it's titled. It may take a moment to get there. I know yours last week took a moment. I sent it to you too, Ray, um, if you want to post it. Yep, I got it and I'll have it up in a second. Okay, so you got it. Justine, do you have it yet? Ah, uh, the wires. It probably goes all the way to, you know, Seattle. Who knows? I mean, it's really incredible. We have no idea how where this thing goes and then comes back to us. Okay, just I might never go on the internet if I knew that. Oh, oh, it's incredible. The web. I mean, it is a web. Tim, do you have it yet? I do. I was reading it. Okay. Charity, you haven't seen it yet? All right. Let me send it one more time to you.
Ethan, I'm good now. I got it. Got it. Great. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, this is what I took from my notes of what we, um, these are all, all the things that I think we've talked about so far. And at the end, when we were putting together our list and there was a couple that was added by Joanne that we consider um, as we go through them, um, I think what I'd like to write into this is um, sort of code them uh, priority um, and is it advisory or are we talking action that we're recommending? So it's sort of, we wanna, we wanna number these by the end of the night, I think. Uh, here's, here's my basic thing. I, we may find that eight things that there's only maybe, you know, one or two really action things on it that we want the board to take on, don't forget. Just a reminder, we do have the time to make changes in May as well, if we feel that's important. And we were talking about what is feasible and what is doable by the board. The board, I don't know if you've looked at the agenda. Well, you haven't yet because it hasn't gone out. The agenda, we have a big agenda um, with COVID, a lot of COVID things, structures, high school building. Um, that's not a reason not to make substantive changes, but I think we would get a much better reception from the board if we are very clear in our priorities um, in terms of what we say, this is what we think is the number one thing we should work on. Uh, the way we've been talking, that has been about how re-election of board members happens. Um, and that's the one we've taken the most action on. Uh, but at the end of the night, what I want from all four of us and with public comment, um, I want um, a list of, I want this prioritized, number one being our biggest one. And then I also want to categorize each one as um, advisory or action. In other words, we advise, we just want to, you know, the budget one, for example, might be just an advice that we want that to happen. We think that should happen. But action might be we have, we want to submit this amendment to you to consider. So those two qualifications. Does that sound clear for our job tonight? Thumbs up from Charity. Thumbs up from Justine and Tim. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. I thought we were going to bring like two to this month's board meeting. And one, I, of, them, and one of them was. Personally, I mean, we'll see. There may be something else we can mention. Um, but I, I'm thinking realistically, that's going to get us a lot more bang for our buck. And I'm not speaking as the chairman, because I, I really do feel like the full board is going to have things to say about these things. We may find that, you know, because several of these are advisory, we can just sort of mention them as well. And then um, um, I think we should give them a, a full report of what we've talked about. Oh, I didn't tell you, by the way, um, uh, I did I did write up a little something for the Herald of what we've been doing. I mentioned Hot Topic, um, you know, that we're looking at all kinds of things. We're looking at promises that possibly were made. Um, and that we're going to make recommendations to the board. So that hope, that will be in next week's, or this week's, this Thursday's paper, just to keep people apprised of what we're doing. So um, let's start with number one, um, budget coded. And, am I, and, and Charity, correct me if I wrote this right, budget coded at business office level to reveal expenses at each camp, camp, campus. Um, uh, I think that just from being in a business office, it's actually the coding starts right from the two schools. So it's not at the business office level. It's at the expense level where the expense is happening. So if you've got invoices going to your two office staff in each of the buildings, then it, it starts there. Because if the if the paperwork, if, in my understanding, if the invoice is brought to the school and they have to code and validate that it's correct, that's where that first piece happens. So it's at the building level with whoever's handling that. Can you can you can you write because this has been what your thing and you clarified it last week and. I have to say my notes were not as complete on, or un understandable to me as I might have wanted. What you want to see in this article or, you know, what do you want to see in this? What are you asking for? 
And, and uh, I guess the simplest than... way to do it would be to say can, uh, individual location, expense, recognition. And You're not asking for two separate budgets, right? You're just no, identifying that's what she taught. Which yeah, building? She, it's it's that it's that at some level we know where each every expense happens. Because they for do that anyway. Can be done that way, yes. But I'm I guarantee you that if I were able to sit down and talk with Tara, she and I would recognize that there are some expenses that will never be able to be recognized in that fashion. Mm -hmm. Because they're they come through SU monies that come through state and federal funding, and those will never get this type of recognition. That this would be applied to things such as the expenses that are physically happening within the two campuses. So it, it this will not apply to everything. And then there are also HIPAA regs that are going to prevent you from doing some of this at a truly visible level. But for some of these, uh, there are ways that are not overly tedious. And once you start doing them, just become second nature. If Rochester's campus number one and Stockbridge is campus number two, and you buy 10 pairs of safety shoes at one campus, you code it, you know, SS-1. And for campus number two, it's SS-2. It falls what's in line what's... with your already existing books. What's what's the what's the intent of it? Why why would we suggest to the school board that this be implemented if it's not already? So just as you would with any business, you want to make sure that you are balancing out your income versus expense. In this particular situation, and a subject that has come up to many people from the Stockbridge side, and I'm not throwing this out to throw either any either or anyone from any location under the bus, you know, it's not a secret that Rochester had a significantly higher per student expense than Stockbridge before the merger. While, yes, we need to get to a point where we move forward and see it all as one, you still need to have some way to validate, you know, is, is one school, one campus being as fiscally responsible as the other? And if not, where that's is it statement. coming from? That's the statement right there. I yeah, think that's the statement. Um, uh, it's, come fiscally, from, come it's fiscal responsibility. Yeah, well, now I think that's it. Um, it's answering, it's, um, that's what we can, that's, that's the intent is, where to be able to to confirm fiscal responsibility at both campuses. What was well, the word I said? To... We, well, we've got to remember that we're running two elementaries now, or one elementary out of two buildings. Yes. And, and you guys inherited the expenses of the high school as RSUD. So I mean, it's no secret that we were spending a lot of money on the high school students and uh, we were bonding to keep that uh, building open. Now, we know that the bonds were split from elementary and high school, and I'm not sure that we understand exactly where those bonds money went. So right now, uh, to do the two schools, I think that what Charity's saying makes good sense, and then we can track uh, where money is going and, uh, you know, really be able to find out if we're getting um, tuition income. So that will show, you know, that will show if we are getting income from tuition students or whether we're losing money from tuition students. And it will also show what, how much we're spending on fuel oil and electricity compared to what Stockbridge is. You know, there's certain things that we can track that show where the expenses are different and what we can do about it. What we need to do is figure out what we can do about these things.
And okay. by we, so, and, so, by, uh, and by we, I mean uh, the board, not yeah, this committee. Um, well, let me let me try this. This so how I've written it here is budget coded at the expense level to reveal expenses at each campus. Intent to reveal spending equity in real time at at both campuses. That's I know I say both campuses, but is that the intent? And I would say that's advisory. Right now, for right today, when you go to your meeting next week, I would say that's advisory. Uh, but you know. I'm not well, sure I could, what the other people think. I, I could certainly see, as as a person on the board, I could see its usefulness, um, like like a, like the questionnaire. It's something we can go back to for hard facts when there's questions about how things are getting spent. Um, and I I'm sure. So I, I I okay. I'm gonna. So right now it's a so budget budget coded at the expense level to reveal expenses. Oh, I'm saying to reveal. I'm going to say reveal accounting at each campus. Intent to reveal spending equity in real time at both campuses. And this is advisory. It's not like we're looking for. Is that we agree that we're not looking for an amendment at this time to the articles to make this happen, this is something we suggest to the board. Charity's nodding her head. Justine, how do you feel? Sums up. Okay, good. Well, let's move on. Okay, so this is a biggie. Um, let's look at Dina's, did you all get my forward from Dina of the article? Yeah. Um, yeah. Ray, Ray, I didn't send this to you, did I, Ray? I'm not seeing it, Ethan. Yeah. Sorry. Let me um, let me forward it to you right now. Whoops. Doesn't like you, Ray. There we go. All right. So I'll read it out loud. Article one, shall the legal voters of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District amend article seven, board composition of the article, I uh, thought should probably be in, well, no, maybe not, I don't know, of the articles of agreement governing the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District to the following. Article seven, board composition. The Unified District Board of School Directors shall be comprised of six members who will be initially be elected on an at-large basis by Australian ballot vote of the voters of the unified district and according to the article nine below. Thereafter, the board of directors shall be elected in the manner specified in article 11 below. The membership of the unified district. Three directors. Okay, the membership of the unified district board of school directors will be as follows. Three directors shall be elected from the candidates nominated by the legal voters of Rochester from the legal residents of that town. Such representatives shall be voted on solely by the legal residents of Rochester. Three, three directors shall be elected from candidates nominated by the legal voters of Stockbridge from among the legal residents of that town. Such representatives shall be voted on solely by the legal residents of Stockbridge. All directors shall have equal votes on the board. Article two, shall the legal voters of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District elect its board of directors by Australian ballot? Okay. Or in the alternative, she says, writes here, if the proposal is to do all budget public question election of school board directors by Australian balloting, then add the following articles. Article three, shall the legal voters of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District adopt an annual budget by Australian ballot? Shall the legal voters of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District vote on all public questions by Australian ballot? Okay, let's take this. Um, so obviously, the Australian ballot, and I, I almost feel like we don't need to, we don't need to worry about Australian ballot or not. I feel like that's that's a good one. We've handed some options to the board. Um, 
but let's get your intent of what you think about this. Justine, you had your hand up. Uh, yes, I want to, um, the very top of the document, it says proposed warning to amend article 11. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't it, it's article seven, right? I think that's incorrect. Yep. Um, and secondly, I think the very first sentence under board composition is misleading to what we are proposing. And I, I would propose to edit it to exclude the words at large basis and include elected by their specific towns or. Could you say that again, please? I'm, I'm not following where you are. Uh, under board composition, article seven board composition in bold. Mm -hmm. Um, that first sentence um, says that the members will be initially elected by uh, initially be elected on an at-large basis. I think it, it would be better to um, spell that out as elected um, within each town or their their respective towns instead of. I, it's, I'm wondering if this isn't historical. If this isn't how it had to happen at first, and that's why it's in there. Um, that, that I think it's how it initially had to happen. So that's why it's part of the merger. But then going forward, I don't know. I mean, this is a good question for Dina um, why it's in there. Because um, it, it does seem to say what already exists. Right. I think this is the way the article looks in the actual articles. I, I just want to suggest to cross out at large basis and change the wording of that section as another edit. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Justine. I'm a little confused on this because if she is in fact trying to keep, if Dina was in fact trying to keep the exact historical language, I don't think it is because I don't know that that last comment of article 11 below is in it, at least not in the copy in front of me in my hands. Okay. So if that was her intent, we need to double check that. But I Sorry. agree with Justine on the at-large basis verbiage change as well. So read to me a change then, because I'm, I'm still not, uh, and I just want to be, because I want to make sure I know what we're, I, I see, I see at-large and that through me, that's, you can hear it in my reading. I couldn't quite get that. Um, initially, I think the key word here is initially. Who will um, initially be? That's the historical aspect of this. So once the merger starts, initially they're going to be voted this way. What I'm not seeing is, you know, we will now amend that to change. Thereafter, see, I think it's initially and thereafter are the key term words there. Because initially, I'm what you mean by um, historically? To, the way I'm reading this document is that this will be what the the voters are voting on as our articles going forward, including these edits. Am I incorrect about that? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that's a very good question. I don't know why she puts that um, unless it is that it needs to cover something that ha already happened. Because that is, that's what initially and there thereafter um, in the manner specified in Article 11 below. Oh, but I see. So if she is saying it's specified in Article 11 below, so Article 11. I think she's cut and paste from the, um, the what we've already voted on. I mean, I did. Which is what she told us was not supposed to be done. So that's, I think Justine and I are on the same page in that okay. Dina has written a document that actually contradicts what she told us she was going to do. Well, in some I, context, it may also be that, you know, I reminded her of it um, at about, you know, one o'clock this afternoon and she did something very fast because she hadn't, hadn't done it yet. I don't know. Um, yeah. I we think need to overlooked so that sentence. I think that she's revised it appropriately, but overlooked that sentence. That's my so, take. So, so what is our suggested change to her? Well, the original one that we decided on the very first meeting was it was not going to be at large. So I think yeah, she just, I think she just needs to uh, rewrite that one spot. So is it and, is it the first paragraph that we first sentence under board composition? Yes. 
to exclude at large basis and reflect that it will be voted by each the representatives from okay. each town will be voted by voters in those towns and her concern was how are you going to track that if we don't do australian ballot so right that's fine we, we cover that at the bottom and she gives us the options you know that we can present to the board okay i i get you now that i think I, 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 uh, let me ask, I will ask her that. And I ask her why it's in there. I'm a little confused myself by it says Article 7, board composition, in accordance with Article 9 below. And then it says the manner specified Article 11 below. And I don't see any Article 11 or Article 9 here. Because those are below in the actual articles that exist already. She's just okay. cut and paste this section because this is the only place we're editing. So an article 11 is about terms? Um, time. No, no. <sighs> article um, 11 is the piece of verbiage that caused a bit of controversy and which is why we had asked her to clarify what the actual governing document is because article 11 says that's not the correct document that Ray is showing. That's the one that was presented to the BOE. That is not the ratified articles. I'm not seeing it. Well, at the very end. It's the very, yeah, it's, it's the very end of that document, Ray, like last time. Go down to it's page 25. Yeah, it's down when it gets down to the numbers. Keep going. Page 25. Go up a little, uh, down a tiny, so there right go. there. So Article 11 is what kind of caused a bunch of confusion because Article 11 states that, the B and this is a, a voted on article, it states that the BOE presentation and report and formation of the plan were going to be the governing body. This is why there were so many people from Stockbridge very confused about are the articles Articles themselves, the governing document, or is the presentation, the whole 26 page document that Ray has shown on the screen, also a part of governing documents? And Dina came back to us and said, no, it is the voted on articles only. Mm -hmm. So, a piece of my thing that I have written down as an item to talk about tonight is I'm writing it to amend this article in order to get clarification about amending any articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind well, of a circle that I don't know how to make it stop spinning. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I don't, we haven't really talked about this as the spot where it talks about it, but. Um, I think this is the rotten apple in the room at the moment. <laughs> Um, I think because we had Dina last time clarify to us that the articles that were uh, warned were the governing articles, I think we kind of dropped it a little bit. I'm not sure. It is still confusing, even though yeah. she, uh, submits that we're supposed to be following something, the actual articles represent something else. Got you. Yeah, I, I, I've not seen it like that before. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm writing it down, too, as nine on our list. Okay. I, would, I wouldn't mind if the board got a second opinion on some of this stuff. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm perfectly one for that. And there is time and there is time for that too. Once we present to the board. Um, well, let's, let's, um, so we've got this change. Let's get back to the, um, uh, where did I get it? Nope. Come on, Ethan. How do we feel about the actual amend? You know, the the change in itself. Obviously, there's some. I I think it sounds pretty clear, but I'm definitely interested in what you say. That it's the action we want to happen. Thank you, Ray. I think we just need to make sure that our verbiage is solid, and I don't know that that's necessarily in this committee's hands. Yes. I think if the board as a whole, because remember, we're going to make a recommendation to the board as a whole mm -hmm. of what they're going to, what we would suggest they consider 
putting to the two towns. But ultimately, it is in the full board's hands of what they're going to do. Yep. So do we need to whittle down every single, you know, cross your T and dot your I tonight on this? I don't think so, as nope. long as the true intent is carried forward and the answers are, are you know, whittled out before it's presented for towns to vote. Great. So I'm um, I'm going to I have two actions. I'm going to ask Dina about that verbiage because I do think that's uh, the at large in the first sentence and get a response from her. And otherwise, I think this is um, I'm going to say this is an amendment proposal to the board. So it's an action proposal. Um, and I would say, I would say this has been from the very beginning, this has been one of our first top priorities. Well, it's a, it's one that makes sense. You know, we're two small towns mm -hmm. and Rochester can outvote Stockbridge by 50%. So, uh, it, you know, if it comes to work out, then let's just do it. I, I mean, I, I would I would put it to number personally, I would put it to number one for us. I think the way we've been talking about it, um, uh, we may find that some of the other things are, are I mean, I, that number or that article 11 sounds like it might be a pretty potent one, too, actually, just to be clear. Well, um, I think I what, think that I think this one can be done fairly quickly. So I think it should be number one because it can Ethan? be done. I was wondering, I know it's not public comment, but I spoke to Dana, the lawyer, about this specific topic, and I actually have an answer on it, if you want me to tell you guys what that is. Dana, who? Dana, who? who? The lawyer. Well, you mean Dina? Dina, I Dina would... yes. Oh, Dina, yes. okay. So when I had emailed her about adjusting the weight of the vote, so Stockbridge would choose their own, Rochester would choose their own representative. She told me that it ha because the state views the school um, union as one entity, everybody has to vote and everybody has to count. The only way we can change that is to dissolve. That's straight from her. Well, that's then why did she write us an amendment? Because she did say that we could change anything in our agreement as long as it was voted on. She said that to me in both an email and in person last last time. Oh, so that's, that's interesting. Not a contradiction. And um, we've also gotten so, clarification from that from another attorney as well. Yeah. So I think we. Um, well, okay. I think this is. Um, I did get, as I told you, I did get a recommendation of uh, another law firm from Jamie. I think we put it by them and check. And certainly, this is something I can do. Hopefully, get an answer back before. Um, uh, before uh, next Tuesday's meeting. So I will, I will get that. Okay. All right. I just wanted to put that out there, that that's what she had told me. So thank you. Okay. So, uh, uh, Justine, how do you feel about as far as priority? Is this priority one for us? Absolutely. I think this is definitely priority one. Okay. Uh, Charity? Yep. Okay. Let's put it up. It's going to move up to number one. All right. And, and, I th I think it and things are changing at the BOE. So they would much rather see articles written that fit our needs than what is just rubber stamped. I would, I would think so. I mean, you know, look at, we're, we're, we're working to make work what they set up for us, you know? Well, what, exactly the, right. what, the legislat uh, what the legislature set up for us. Well, so, just you know. a minute, just a minute. Let's not throw the legislation under the table that quickly. BOE is not following what Act 46 says on several things. 
And uh, both Tim Ash and David Zuckerman have made it very public, and, and David Sharp have made it very public that the intent is not being followed by the BOE. So let's, well, let's, get... let's write what works for the two of our, our towns and let BOE fight over that and just well, you... do what's best for us. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think this is how we make this work. And and if they have a problem with it, well, then we start fighting that. Um, OK, um, then to keep us moving, I want to get us down to number three. Um, and I think this is t Tim's thing. How does a tie vote get broken on the school board on a school board vote? Um, uh, what's our level of uh, advisory that it's something the board needs to think about certainly um uh, if i think it's advisory i don't think this committee ought to spend a lot of time on that but i certainly think that that's something that that the board ought to figure out because it very well could come to that at some point and what happens if there's a board member missing or two board members missing you still have a quorum if there's only four so um you know i think the board ought to hash that out a little bit Maybe not necessarily this month if you got a whole bunch of stuff to do, but certainly sometime in the future. Okay, so let's. I mean, you know, is it, we've decided this is an ongoing committee, um, so uh, uh, I, I think we'll keep it at that place. Um, is that how does that feel, Charity? As far as um, good, Justine. Thumbs up. I've seen thumbs up from both of them. Just for the record. Okay. Uh, bu 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 bum. So uh, just so you know, uh, Article 5, I forwarded on to David uh, Rowe, um, Rue? Rue, I think it is, um, just as he went on vacation for the whole week. So I'm hoping to have a response from him. Dina did not know the issue well enough to speak to it today when I heard back from her. Um, as far as what that means for the high school, um, uh, but I'm, I'm sure we'll hear something from David uh, ne early next week, and I'll I'll remember to follow up with him. Any any he, other comments on that one? Tim? Does does the RSUD know how much it's going to cost to do the minimum amount to get the town of Rochester to take that building over? Well, it was in our last report. I think we had it. We'd spent about ten thousand so far. Um, it's actually when I get talking about amending minutes, um, I realize I misspoke in the last, and I've been meaning to put this out, that the uh, the numbers are not quite uh, correct. And that was my misstating. Um, the, the number I said, three or two to 3,000 more, that was from the legal firm alone. Um, so there is probably, it's in the realm between 20, 10 to probably seventeen thousand dollars is the last estimate of what it is take going to take to prepare the building. Wastewater, um, uh, wastewaters of the the survey, um, and any um, any presentation before uh, the uh, oh what's the board called that approves subdivisions. So I'll have more to say about that on um, ANR Agency of Natural Resources. Act yeah, I mean, all that, all that's part of it. We'll have more to say. I'm I'm really hoping that we're actually at a point uh, by next meeting that we can uh, start negotiating with the town. Uh, that's my hope. Um, I have actually I haven't spoken with David in since um yeah since last week. So um, I I don't know exactly where they are, but I'm really hoping that we're we're, we're very close to that. Anyway, um, okay, so let's table that, Ethan, I think, yes. So do we wanna list that one as pending since we yeah. don't yeah. necessarily wanna throw it into advisory because we do know that it needs to be acted upon? Pending is so, a great term, thank you. Okay. That's a great term, thank you. All right, uh, wait, sorry, I did. You skipped four. I skipped, I skipped four, didn't I? Yeah, yep. sorry. So pen five is pending for, okay, four. So I stated this, can the public have a vote say in the in realignment of grades within buildings? Is that, is that it, our intent? Let me know, Charity. 
No, because it's not in within buildings. I don't think we want to mess around with that. You know, okay. Stockbridge has had a huge success with being able to realign what grades are in what rooms and it's based on like head counts. It's it's not within the buildings. That the, no, the, the individual between. administration needs to maintain that capability. It's the alignment within the cam two campuses as a whole. Moving like I know so there have been suggestions to move all third, fourth, and fifth graders to one building. That's what we want to have discussed and considered. Not being able to do that mm -hmm. just on a whim. Uh, so I changed. I changed um, uh, within, which I didn't mean to put uh, to between buildings. Is that? Can the public have a vote say in realignment of grades between buildings? Does that cover what we're trying to say? I like that better. Well, Charity, I, I meant to follow up with you about that. Um, are you saying you don't want to co-mingle students or just- uh, No, 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 not at all. Okay. You mean, so my intention with asking for this to be considered was not when it comes to events or specials or anything like that. It, became, it was directly in regards to the concern over the suggestion that has come up a few different times um, about moving all of pre-K 1-2 to, to the Rochester facility so that Stockbridge is only 3, 4, 5, 6. And I totally made that scenario up as an example. So please, no one think that that's an option that's going to happen. Um, just for example purposes, my... The, the concern that's been brought to me by people and I myself have is there are geographic constraints with that, families that have more than one kid in more than one grade. Um, you know, the, the simple fact that the language of this merger originally says that it's a pre-K through six. And I think we've all seen that there's very strong desire for each town to keep its schools within it. And I just don't think that it should be taken lightly and at only board discretion that without community involvement that we on a whim decide, okay, next year we're gonna move everything to Rochester under fifth grade and everything to Stockbridge below or you know any scenario like that. I really think we need to have language in there that there's public input. And like I said earlier in the meeting, I'm not saying that the board lose its ability to suggest and make management calls on that. I just think there needs it needs to be done in a way so it's not happening on a whim without community involvement. So I mean, I will definitely see this in an advisory section because there's a whole lot that would need to be talked about with it. Well, I think if that was the case, there would be plenty of community involvement. <laughs> but <laughs> so, let me rephrase that: positive community involvement. Well, there you go. Not community reaction. <laughs> I think the term. I think the term here again is mechanism. Is that we we want a transparent mechanism? Yes. How this happens, so that people feel secure that it's not going to happen, you know, overnight. Yeah. Um, and that, that's why I think this is this one is one that, you know, we can't act on this one immediately. This one has to go into an advisory capacity to be looked at. How do we adequately consider this one for modification? That's yeah. just my opinion. Oh, well, there's no I mean, you know, with some of the budget, some of the budgetary constraints we're, you know, going to be facing with this budget, we're going to have to. A lot of things, a lot of things are going to come on the table. I'm sure that's just the nature of it. And better that we transparent mechanism that people have a say in it, like we're doing here tonight, like, like this way. Um, transparent mechanism. Okay, advisory. Well, open, open, open meeting laws give you that uh, mechanism. It's just. Well, I, I think I think what Charity's looking for, what I'm hearing is is something uh, a little more forceful than that. 
a little more um, having to go to the people to get, you know, I mean, to vote on it is, you know, I, I, I don't think that's totally unreasonable for such a dramatic change. Um, it's, it's definitely not unreasonable. I'm just saying that uh, the transparency part is the key. And that was part of Act 46 uh, things that well, they I, wanted to do. Well, I think I think the um, uh, it's advisory, and I think it's something we should also look at again because I think it's the kind of thing that if people feel strongly about, maybe it is amended. That that such a significant change. I mean, it's the same thing as closing us. It feels like of the same level as closing a school to realign a school so big. Maybe that is something that should be voted on, and maybe that is an amendment. But I don't think we're there yet with this one. Um, would is that what Justine and Charity do? Would you agree with that statement? Yes, I would, and I agree that you just said it. There's verbiage when it comes to closing a school, and I see this one is closely related to that same concept. And yeah, I, that's why I just feel strongly we need to put this one in for more advisement. Um, uh, I, I feel like this might be number two in priority. How do people feel about that? Well, it, it's certainly an easy one to write in and, you know, it makes sense to do it. It, it, I, I'd agree with that. I mean, it's not a complicated issue if we, if that's written into the article. Well, I mean, you know, any any time you amend anything this significant, um, it's a big deal because um, uh, it's got to go through whole layers. As I was explaining, um, you know, it's there's there's a series of checks and balances here. We're advising the board considers, and then the voters take action on on articles. Um, so, uh, but I th I I feel like this is um. A, a pretty big one to put in there, and I would put it above a coded budget myself. Um, well, Justine, how do you feel? Think it's a number I, two or number three? I think this is, goes above coded budget, in my opinion, because of the you know the identity topic between the schools. I agree that it it strongly affects the I, identity of each school. So. Mm -hmm. The uh, security of having something in there that would prevent anything from being uprooted drastically, I think, um, would greatly benefit each town and each school's identity. We, this, this, I think this is, this sounds like maybe, oh, Charity, sorry, let me get your, your opinion. Uh, number two for us on this? On the advisory list. So I guess that's my question is, or can I make a suggestion that we have a, a a ranking of the advisory items and a ranking of the act items? Because I think you should put those into two separate columns and rank them within their column appropriately. Sorry, that's the analytical part of me coming out. Nope. Um, good. Let me start a new. Once this board gets that high school off the plate, you guys can actually start doing something with education. Huh, I know. Oh. All right, so advisory number one. Okay. Dum, bum, 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 bum. And so advisory would also be uh, budget budget coded or tie vote, but we I think we have them as two three so that'd be um, school a uh, class alignment within across campuses is one uh, budget coded is two and how to break a tie vote is three right now in our advisory list. I would move budget down because I think in all reality that's already being addressed in its own respect by Jamie Canarney and the sites. It's just a matter of getting all the parties that be in alignment 
So that to me is probably going to be the least important to worry about at this point based on the items on this list. I'm uh, redoing our list and making it um, so we haven't. Okay. All right. This is our action list at the top. I mean, do we want then, Charity, would it feel good to have a pending list? You're... Yes, probably. <laughs> okay. So actions list, advisory list. I mean, and we also, we may decide that, you know, we may, uh, you know, we'll let, uh, afterwards we'll talk about this after we get this whole list done of what we, um, how we, how we want to present this, you know, I mean, w do we want to read everything we, we came up with, but say, boom, this is our, this is what we want action on. Um, because almost all of these things are things that I didn't know about, hadn't conceived of, and are certainly worth being aware of, if not taking action on. That's how I feel as the board, as a board, as a board member. Okay, so actions list and then pending list. So Ethan, as we're doing this, so that we don't forget one, I think you had said you added number nine which is Article 11, uh, if we want yes. to call it clarification of its validity. Yep. Um, in my mind, that's something we need to do ASAP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know where we want to put that on which list. Let's 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 get there. Let's get there. Okay. And just keep to our 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 our, our um, process is going pretty well right now, and I think um, we're getting there pretty closely. Um. All right, and then put that in the pending list. Okay, uh, and Justine, I can, I'll can i send you this once I've finished this draft, I'll send you this and this can be included in the minutes. Um, bu, bu, bu. Okay, so I sent you Joanne's um, explanation of this and I was, um, I was a little, after, I, after the meeting, it, you know, it's made sense to me and then it didn't make, or I just wasn't sure. And then she says, I believe I was using it as an example as Stockbridge will always be outvoted. Wouldn't it be more fair to use a percentage vote in each town instead of always throwing all votes into one hat? 51% of Stockbridge voted yes, then Stockbridge gets one vote yes. 51% of Rochester voted yes, then they get one vote yes. A more fair way is 65% yes vote in one town would win over a 55 no vote in the other. Um, I just and she says I just don't understand how the state ever thought of that joining different populated towns would ever seem equitable for the smaller town. If you look across the state, many smaller towns are attempting to separate from their perspective merged districts. So, what do we want to do with this one? That's the one that you need to get a second opinion on. Yeah, I agree with Tim because. I understand the concept. Mm -hmm. And of course, being from the smaller town, I understand the reasoning behind the desire for it. What I have no concept of is the legal basis of doing something like this. So I think for this one, I would love to get some legal opinion that has knowledge of like how, how this could even play into something and possibly explanation of, is it even doable? I don't want to. I don't want to say yes or no. I I want more help from people who are more knowledgeable in the subject. Um, then that sounds that sounds pending to me. Pending. Um, pending with legal um, legal advisory. Right, because we we were told that early on that you couldn't split votes like that by percentage. And I just think that it would be clean if we got a second opinion on that from somebody that wasn't involved in writing the original well, articles. I, I, I would say that the, the, 
the real thing is to address is to bring up the problem. The problem is this inequity of a full vote in one town overriding a full vote in the other town, no matter, you know. Um, and I, I, I think that's, you know, while this is pending, I still feel this is something we should bring up to the, uh, the board, that this is an ongoing concern is that, you know, one town's vote can overwhelm by majority vote. One town vote can overwhelm the other town always. And I think that's the problem we want to bring to their attention, the board's attention. And then this is a suggestion, a possible suggestion down the line once we have some more legal legal things. So I would say maybe we put this in advisory that we have to be aware of this um, and then say in pending that we want to get more legal information about this, this, I, this idea anyway. That we have an idea, but we think we need to get more legal event. Does that sound good, Justine? Yes, and and thank you, Justine. Don't worry. Do your best. You know, I know after a long day at work, this is like the last thing you you know. Do your best. We'll 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 get it out there. Um, Tim, does that sound like a good idea? We put this as an advisory of the problem, and then we put the solution as pending legal advice. Uh, yeah. And keep in mind, we're not the only district that's uh, finding this issue being an issue. Um, great. Uh, where? How big a, in our advisory list is this? Bigger than realignment of grades with between buildings, budget coded. Is this a number one? Justine, do you think this is number one in advisory? Um, wh what is number the pro one? The problem, the problem that the vote, majority vote can always be weighted against the small town. Yeah. I think so. Okay. I, th I think it is number one because it over overshadows everything that happens. And it's the root of the unfairness that is felt. Charity. I agree with Justine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tim. Yep. Okay. Number one. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Number one in advisory is I'm not sure this is um, uh, check on this sentence I just wrote Majority vote is always unfair to the smaller town in votes. Is it is that always appropriate? Well, Historically, this, so far uh, it is. Yeah, at this point, it certainly is. What do you think, Justine? I don't see how it could be fair if the populations are so different. Got you. It's it's yeah. As you say, Tim, this is something that should have been taken into consideration by the state. You know, if they're going to force different sized towns together, there's got to be a mechanism to make this equitable. You know what the mechanism is? Stockbridge in Rochester tells them how to do it. <laughs> okay, good. So the problem is advisory one. The, um, the solution, uh, can we vote by percentage in each town opposed to a majority? And I'll add in Joanne's explanation of that. And that's going into our pending list with legal advisory as to its um, legality. Good. Okay, we're now at um, number three, can there be a limit mechanism for limiting large bond items at one campus or other? And this was a second thing Joanne brought up in the public comment at the end of our meeting. How do we feel about this? 
Can you Jerry. read that again? Oh, hold on a sec. Yes. Um, can there be a limit or mechanism for limiting large bite bond items at one campus or the other? Basically, so, yeah. The theory is that putting it to the voters is your mechanism for not letting it happen. Which and that's I don't already know. in place. That's already right. In place. So I I don't know what other mechanism you would utilize. I think it's already in place, unless I'm not aware of the process, unless I'm not properly aware of the process. It's not as if the board itself, I guess that's the question I have to cl clarify the, the concept. Is it possible for the board itself without the vote of the two towns to enter into a new bond? I think the bigger question with this one is, is because we're considering amending the mechanisms for voting, mm -hmm. is there a way we can prevent it until those mechanisms have been put in place in a more proper manner? Is that a better way to, to ask this question? Joanne, I see your hand up. Um, Joanne, I'll see your hand up. Let me just get through my committee members and then we'll get to you, if that's okay. Yep. Um, Justine. Charity, could you re repeat what you just said? <laughs> the last yeah. Well, the last part. The last, the part, last I, sentence. The last part, I think, was the key. Is, yeah. Is there some way to prevent? We're, in, so in reality, goes, yeah. we're in the process of trying to more proportionately align the voting system. I think the real question is, until we get a more proportion, proportionally aligned voting system in place for the two towns, can we prevent a bond from being entered into? Because right now, Rochester could totally vote what's going on, even if, if Stockbridge didn't want it to happen. So the real, I think in my mind, the real question is, until we get a properly proportionate voting mechanism in place, can we prevent a bond from being entered into? Because it would be likely biased in one direction or possibly. Possibly. Yes, possibly. So we're looking to put a hold on that possibility until a, a, a more fair vote is in voting mechanism is in place. Is that what you mean? Is that can we yeah. legally prevent that from happening while we're in this limbo period of figuring out how to vote? Yeah. Well, we we can't afford I a bond right that now anyway. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a sec. Tim, Tim, hold on a sec. Let just let Justine's responding. And then we'll get to you and then we'll get uh, to join. I think that's probably a legal question if we can control that at all. Um, I, I think that you're, I think that we definitely, it's definitely a, an issue and a concern. It should, it should not be um, either town's fear that this could happen under an unfair vote. So that that's my opinion, but I think it's a, a I don't whether we can put it on hold is a legal question that I can't answer. I'm putting that in, uh, Tim. Well, my I was just saying that we can't afford a bond right now because that'll put us over the threshold. We're we're already teetering on that, so you know uh, the RSUD has got to come up with how to operate two buildings and educate and give our kids opportunities. Okay, uh, jo uh, Joanne, thank you for your patience. You wanted to speak on this as this was. Are you there, Joanne? Oh, did she, I noticed she was having some internet issues. Oh, Joanne, are you there? Well, 
Um, okay, well, let's, let's, if she jumps on, well. Hold on, she sent me a message that says it's not what I meant. Oh. Okay. Well, it's and still I don't a very, what, what we, what we're taking it from is actually a very interesting point. So, uh, um, uh, do you want to explain what you meant? Explain what you meant and make the coffee. I don't know if she's actually on. No. Okay. Um, well, uh, I we'll we'll get we'll hear from her eventually. Um, this sounds like, at this point, certainly advisory. Um, and where is it in our priority list of advisory? Is it two or she's is back. it the? Oh, she's back. Joanne, you there? I think you guys muted me. Uh, I didn't. Okay. Nope. I don't well, I have any. Con it's not like Zoom. I have no control over that. But can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm like, you're answering me. Um, what I meant was last week, I meant not have a big, huge bond, which I just feel one coming. A big bond before the five years, but I like what you're talking about better. I was just afraid that, you know, we were going to get into this huge amount of money um, that then it's going, then that would predicate whatever the future decisions are going to be. That's all I meant for five, for the first five years. No big bond. Okay. Well, I think, I, I think we've gone to somewhat the deeper issue. Yes, I agree. Writing, writing over and connected to your, you know, your more, as we've gotten to the problem of your first suggestion. There you go. Yeah, there you the, go. Um, Thank you so I, much. I won't waste any, any more of your time. Thank you. Never a waste. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So, um, it feels like it's definitely not a number one feels to me. Number one, the problem majority vote is still number one for me in the advisory list. Um, is this, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I feel like the public having a say of realignment and grades is probably still number two for me in advisory list. Um, what, so I'm thinking three, I'm thinking a three for this, but what do we, what's the other, Justine, what do you, how do you feel? Where does it go? I agree with your order. Okay. Joe Charity agrees with that, Tim? Yep. Okay. So I've cut it. It's going in advisory. Whoop. That didn't go right. Sorry, just a technical. There we go. Okay. Good. All right. And we're now to. All right. Can the conditions of the merger that were mentioned, I don't know what number this because my numbers keep getting changed as I'm doing up the list now. I think this is eight. Um, can the conditions of the merger that were mentioned in the planning period but not voted on be reviewed to see if there are important elements to reintroduce to the agreements? What's our, I think, I know Charity, you and I have spoken about how this is a sort of a longer term process of review. Yeah, I, was, I was just gonna say, I think this is something we need to put into advisory, but on a more, I'm gonna kind of go on a whim here. I think it needs to be done on a longer term continual expectation. Um, one of the things I wrote down for my notes to discuss within all of this is that there be a continue some mechanism to continually evaluate on a routine basis the success of the merger 
but also mm -hmm. the success of the articles themselves. So two different exercises that could be right. done simultaneously on a continued basis. And that might be- Can you, you say that like, again, please? Just what you said, though. yeah. <laughs> you guys, I don't do repeats very well. I know, I know, but it, it was two, that's, that's very key. So, well, I get it, one, uh, it's a set of, it's just like I'm on the committee to, um, uh, to, um, Oh, well, I can't think of the word, but look at Jamie and his progress and how he's right. been a superintendent. So, that we set up a, a series of criteria. Evaluation process. Evaluation process. Thank you. Evaluation. And, and, and I, I think, think coming up with the right questions. Well, and there's, and I think those questions will change over time as things mm -hmm. change. Yep. But I think there's two parts to it. Evaluate the merger itself and evaluate the articles themselves. Because as times change, I mean, you know, you can't predict 100%, and I would never even wanna try, what direction education is gonna go in. You know, so if, if the state, the federal government, um, private sector do things to alter the standard basis of education and what our parameters are, you may need to look at the articles to say, oh, wait, this worked back in 1995 and it worked in 2020, but now in 2025, they've thrown us for a loop and we need to rethink some pieces of the puzzle. If we're doing an evaluation every three years, I'm just gonna throw that out as a, an option, totally made that number up, um, mm -hmm. then you're at least being forced as a board to say, we know this yep. evaluation's coming up. We need to start mm -hmm. six months ahead of time so that we have all of our ducks in a row to start getting the questions from the public, from the teachers, from the administration, from past students. Um, so I would kind of turn this number eight into that evaluation process. And, um, you know, maybe this this subcommittee becomes a different subcommittee once we've gotten through this initial process that is a long term subcommittee of the RSUD board. Mm -hmm. I, I maybe we'll take a little piece off the full board. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, I mean, it gives me an extra meeting, you know, but uh, and Justine, too. But no, that's uh, I, I, I think of this as essential work. Um, because as I've been on the board, I don't know how long, two years now, three years, I can't remember exactly. Um, it's like flags have been waved in the, in the horizon and we didn't know what they meant. And, and it feels like now, you know, we're looking at this stuff and we're looking at the articles agreement and we're asking questions about them that we have not asked before because we didn't know to. It wasn't, and I really want to emphasize, it wasn't because of uh, any intentional, um, it's just we didn't get it. We didn't understand that there's a mechanism and that this is the structure and that you look at them and that like the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, there is a process with checks and balances in it of how you amend how something works, the mechanism. And uh, I, I, I welcome it. I welcome this idea. I think this is, I, I think one of the best things we can do is turn what is presented to us by various people as the problem and turn it into the solution that we offer the board. And I think that's where we really can do our best work is that we say, here's a solution. Here's something that's gonna make your job clearer and the administrator's jobs clearer um, if you do this. And I think this is an excellent idea. Um, so let me, I wrote it down. I, I don't think, I, I personally don't think it should be um, uh, every three years. I think it should be ongoing. Just because I, I, as a board, as board chairman and when someone else is chairman, they'll feel differently maybe about this, but I like being prodded. Sorry, I'm talking a lot, charity. No, I, I just think that there should be some sort of timeline given that will be a, a report or a, mm -hmm. an open forum okay. specifically for this subject matter would happen on a specified timeline so that the public is aware that this is a checks and balance that's gonna be put in place at a minimum of no less than three years or five years or 
two years, whatever this is decided by the board. But I agree, this the work that this committee is doing, there's no reason that this work can't continue on a continual basis. But that reporting back to and getting specific input for that purpose, like I said, it's a checks and balance. Yes. Well, okay. it's also written into Act 46. That is supposed to be part of what happens. So people shouldn't be upset that it's been three years since this has been reviewed. And, uh, you know, if we do it fairly and accurately, then I think that the two towns can do it. Okay. Um, so this is in a, oh, sorry, Justine, didn't get to you. Um, yes, this actually piggybacks really nicely on two things. One, I, I kept bringing up how closely will we look at the presentation that was presented to the Board of Education because I felt like that was in the past and how much are we going to dig up in the past to try to stick into this thing that should have been. Um, and in addition to a conversations I've had with community members asking, what do we want going forward? The times have changed since this merger. We're in the middle of a pandemic where schooling looks very different at the moment right now. And um, I think that uh, while uh, um, folks were concerned with certain a variety of certain things um, in moving forward with the merger, one of those things is the opportunity for improvement and change. And um, what I think has been lacking is exactly what this committee is doing. And it's allowing a significant amount of public input and working with the community to try to fix these problems. So the ongoing and the future uh, reevaluation, I am very much supportive. Well, and after Dina's comment that the presentation to the BOE uh, was just a waste of time and we were voting on the articles, I wasn't even going to bring up that proposal for, for, to the BOE. A lot of things have changed since then. So, you know, the RSUD board is new. We're hearing things from the community, the this committee. So uh, I'm... I don't have any problem with hearing from people from Stockbridge. I've got friends in Stockbridge that have been there for years. So, and I've got friends from Rochester. My purpose for being on this committee, and I told Ethan this uh, from when he asked me to be on, I didn't go soliciting this to be on the committee. <laughs> but when Ethan asked me, I said, I better either shut up or get on it. <laughs> I think that these two schools can give our students good opportunities. Maybe not better, but certainly more opportunities. And uh, I also said that the very first budget that came out had absolutely no transportation put in that budget to do that. So we need to put the RSUD board really needs to consider putting uh, transportation in this new budget and start uh, cross uh, commuting between the two schools. Um, okay, I'm just writing this up. Um, And that doesn't need to be anything to do with articles of agreement. This just needs to be common sense. Okay, um, so here's what I've put. Um, to set in process a regular evaluation of merger and evaluation of the articles that creates standards and questions and has a report due to the public on a regular basis, one year, three years, et cetera. Does that sound like what we're talking about, Justine? Yep. 
Coach Jody, Tim. Yeah, I I agree with you. It's an ongoing process. Yeah, um, advisory and priority. I I think this is advisory, correct? Charity advisory. Uh, I'm per I'm stuck on that part. Um, because I think, yes, it's advisory, but I think it's, mm -hmm. I, uh, in my opinion, and I'm speaking only on my own behalf, it's advisory with a side of, you need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, so it's an action item. We're, we're saying I think so, is... but it's not an action item that actually needs to be put into the articles. I think it's an action item that we're requesting the board take on effective immediately since hello this committee already exists mm -hmm. uh, and for lack of a better way of saying it and i'm sorry if i offend anyone um we've already started doing it so yeah. why would we squash it now it's 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 sort of um instituting uh, but i think the key is as you said is the report is saying that there will be a report. And I, I don't know, I, the, the way we're working, you know, that there's, you know, with a mistrust level, uh, I, I think it needs to be almost yearly at this point. Um, I think that's what we're doing. I think we're giving them a report on the merger and on, well, I don't know if we're giving a report on the merger because I think that actually somewhat comes from the administration. What we might come up for the administration is the standards by how we measure whether it's successful or not. Is that just test scores or is it, as Tim's talking about cross campus interaction, is it, um, you know, of course COVID's going on. So that's a very different thing, but um, yeah, this is something needs to talk about. Okay, that, so um, action item, Justine, do you feel like it's an action item? Not an amendment, but an action item? Yeah, I don't think it's an amendment. I was thinking advisory because I don't think it should be in the articles necessarily, but I agree with Charity. I think it should be ongoing um, because otherwise we're going to keep revisiting these times where, where people may be unhappy for, for a while. And it's important to kind of keep it fluid so the community members are working as a community. Tim, what's your thought? Um, I mean, we're taking it in as an action item um, not an amendment. All, not all action items are amendments. Action items are, we strongly recommend you do this. <laughs> right. I agree with that. Uh, I mean, the article should be kept to like the amount that you have, maybe one or two more, like the original amendments were, and then they were dropped. But um, uh, I think that we need to discuss the advisory in the pendings before, you know, we're done with making the articles of agreement yes yep okay so in that case i'm going to i'm going to put um i'm going to put can the conditions of the merger that were mentioned in the planning period but not voted on be reviewed i like how we're getting to the root of things we've got sort of a symptom or something like that up here and we're getting to sort of the root issue, but I'm going to put that in pending, that that description of looking at the initial articles, uh, the initial meetings and the 706 stuff. I think that's something we should do down the road. So that would be pending in my mind. Does that sound good? And then if people get happy, we don't even have to go back and visit that pending. <laughs> that's what we want. We want everybody to be happy. Well, we do, actually. All right, pending. Well, if people are happy, the two uh, buildings survive. Yep. Oh, come on now. So then, Ethan, do you have a new number to call this the what I just explained? <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. Well, I'm, I'm calling the evaluation it, um, committee or yeah, whatever. Yeah, evaluation committee. Set and process a regular evaluation, uh, merger and evaluation of articles committee 
And that may be two committees because I think they're two big jobs. Um, and I'm going to put that in parentheses. And so on my list, that's now number two on our action list. Uh, Well, this committee is supposed to be working on the articles. So, yep. uh, yeah. we, you know, we're discussing how to get to the articles without getting too far down that rabbit hole mm -hmm. so that we can uh, give RSUD some information of what we're getting. Yep. Well, no, I think I, I um, yes. Good. Okay. Whoops. I just have to say good night to my son. I'll be right back. Good night. Thank you. All right. So we're now at um, what is now my number three, what was number nine, and this is Article 11 is confusing, and I would even say actually it's contradictory. Ethan, can we wait and make sure Justine and Tim are back on with oh, us? Oh, sorry, they took a break. Okay, got you. Yep. I think they did. I'm yep. back. Why don't you, uh, Tim, you're there. Justine. I don't think Justine is yet. Yep. Let's 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 take a moment then. Just for the public, it's on. Um, just so we will, as soon as we finish this first go through of everything, then we'll get your public comment and then we're gonna go back to sort of finalize anything we've got. So um, public comment will be coming up shortly. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. I uh, muted myself. Tim, are you there? You still there? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Looks like we're all here again. Let's keep going. Um, so Article 11 is confusing, contradictory. What do we want to do with this? Is this an amendment? Huh. I think we need a legal answer on that. I know we've gotten an understanding from Dina. So we know that her perception of this, or I'm assuming her perception based on her language in her email is that this has, is that the BOE presentation and the document, which was considered the plan, don't have any val validity. It's the articles that have validity. I strongly suggest, and hopefully Justine agrees with me, um, that we get another legal opinion on that because we're saying that an item that was written and voted on in the articles now no longer has any validity. But Dina gave us language in her email that anything voted on in the articles is what's valid and this is written into the articles. So it's, I don't know if you wanna call it a double-edged sword or a circle or what, uh, it's a concept that's perplexing to me because I guess my question is, can we get legal clarification of whether or not we have to do something with language to void this 
or do we just leave it alone? Is it going to fix itself with what we've proposed? I, uh, uh, you know, I'm not discrediting Dina at all, but I think maybe we need another opinion. You know. Well, oh, go ahead, Justine. I, um, before we decide to get another opinion, I, I think we should bring uh, Article 11 to Dina's attention specifically with this in mind, because I, I think what we were asking was a very general question, mm -hmm. and it was, what document do we look at as, as law? And she said, the, the document that is law is this. It wasn't, but it also kind of says that we should look at this other stuff. What do you want to say about that? So I think I, I always there's plenty of legal opinions, but I don't think we actually address that specifically with her. Tim? Well, my feeling is that a second opinion is at this point won't hurt and it's not going to cost any more to uh, get a second opinion than it is to keep uh, getting uh, the circle. So, you know, this, uh, this isn't a new issue with the lawyer at this point. We've been, we've been going down this road now for four or five years before this marriage even started. So um, if, if we're going to do it, I think it's time to do it and get a second opinion. Um, I'm going to side with Justine. I think if I, if I just, um, I, I, and I'm willing to pursue both avenues. I certainly um, have no problem with that. Um, I'm also thinking about, um, well, yeah, I, I think we put about, I, I, I think this is a biggie. This feels like a biggie to me. Um, cause it's a clear contradiction. Um, uh, that this is what that we voted on is the law, but this says, <laughs> yeah, it's just a it's a really nasty little contradiction that um, that we need lawyers on. And let's get two opinions about it. I don't have any problem getting two opinions on it. I think it's big enough snafu that it needs to. Or it certainly looks like that. Justine? I don't have a problem getting two opinions on it, but I just wanted to clarify that I don't yeah. think we actually asked the right question. I, 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 agree, I would agree with you. I would agree that I think uh, Article 11 was never mentioned in our... And I never, I didn't even noticed it before. So this is why I'm really glad to have some sharp readers and a legal mind here. Yes, Charity. Um, I do agree with Justine. I don't think we asked the right question or, or the right series of questions. Um, but I think this is important enough that we need to make sure we've got absolutely clear understanding of, is this gonna hold everything up or not? And if, if we are gonna run into a roadblock because of that one article. Um, so I, I'm of the opinion it's worth getting another opinion on it. Um, but like I said, that's not to discredit Dina because I think we didn't ask the right questions just as Justine stated. I mean, you're right. It's, just, it's a circle. It's a circle <laughs> problem. It's like even trying to write it down what the question is. Um, it's like all, you know, all things are, I never tell a lie. That's a lie or something like that. Um, Okay, um, so um, I think I'm going to put this number one in pending. In other words, we need to know more about this before we can really decide what, what we're advising. Uh, not that pending is not, pending is active, it means we got to do stuff on it. How do you feel? Does it need to be action item? Uh, where, where, what do we feel about this? I think this is an action item. It really uh, relates back to both the the voting and the um, the way the classrooms are set up. You know, all of that BOE stuff that we were confused about whether we were looking at. There's more um, detail in that 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 could apply if we were, were to interpret uh, Article 11 in the way we're interpreting it tonight. So, action item from Justine, Charity. Yeah, I agree with Justine and I'm going to go as far out on a limb as I can in that I almost think this is very close to being our number one because if we've interpreted this in the wrong context, all the work we've done on anything else just came to a standstill. Yep. So I think we 
it's like, uh, can we have two things at number one simultaneously? Because <laughs> we need to get this legal clarification in order to know that number one actually is number one. Well, we'll get to, after the public comment, I think we'll get to, okay, be realistic. What are the things we really want to take up the board's time with? And I think that's what that's what after the public comment will be about. And I think we'll be, you know, pretty hard nosed about it. Um, and I think we're I think we're doing a really good job of prioritizing. Um, and we'll figure out how we go forward. Tim, uh, how do you feel? Is this action item? It definitely is action item if we're getting two different answers. And if you're getting information about the one that is number one right now at four o'clock this afternoon when we've got a meeting at 630, uh, I've got an issue with that too. Well, that's partially my fault. Um, sort of relaxing over the Christmas break. Um, and not no, 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 no. E Ethan, we brought that up uh, on the whatever day it was, 21st. So yep. it should have been a surprise. And, you know. Yep. So you're right. So this is not your fault. And it, we need more than an opinion. We need to know exactly what is law and what isn't. So if that means getting Donna Lucia Savage on the phone, let's do it. I've got well, a and as, she, as she says, she's the, she is the advisor. She can give advice to us, but she is not our true legal counsel at this moment. Um, she wrote the damn bill. No, that's fine. I just, um, uh, I, I, I'm willing. I'll, I'll ask all three. I'll ask. <laughs> I'd be sort of wonderful, actually, in some ways to ask all three. See how they come back to us, because um, it's it's a it's a mind bending contradiction to me. Um, all right, so um, yeah, uh, definitely above set and process a regular evaluation of merger the 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 evaluations and one A one B. How about that? I don't know if it's going to let me do this. Okay. Good. I think we're ready to hear some public comment. Ethan, can I add one more? Oh, yeah. Yep. What's up? Um, so one other one that I've hinted at a few different times is that, and I don't know the best way to do it, but I think it definitely should go on our advisory list, is um, the language that's in the articles right now does not state that we need to continue having a proposed budget for the voters that is under the per pupil threshold. And I think we need to consider asking the board to amend that so that we do present only a budget that stays under the threshold. That's advisory 101 right there. What do you mean, Tim? I mean, we shouldn't be going over the threshold with uh, under 200 kids at 4.3 million bucks. You know, we should be somewhere down around 3.8, 3.7. It just goes back to the concept of fiscal responsibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, good. Je uh, Justine, what's your, I haven't heard from you on this. I agree. This topic, uh, comes up, has come up more than once, um, in various different situations regarding the, the, the threshold. And I think, um, it's, it's worth bringing to the board as a, 
as an item to um, include. I don't know. Are you charity? Are you talking about at, including it in, like adding it as an article in the merger that the budget will be proposed as under the threshold? I have it. I have it written out. Amendment that board must propose only budgets that stay under the threshold. About I don't to answer to answer Justine's question. I don't know that it's one that we have to address with an immediate amendment. I think that there's been language from Jamie Canarney that went out SU wide um, in a recent letter just right after the, the break ended that reflected the 9% increase that the governor's expecting um, and that fiscal responsibility is going to be something he's striving for and really pushing hard um, at the entire SU level, as well as the governor pushed that information out to everybody and is expecting that um, within education across the board as with the state as a whole. Um, so I don't know that we need to act on it and change that language right now. That's why I think it's okay to put it in as an advisory item. Um, Where's it? I, the, Where is it? In our that brought it up at one of the actual regular school board meetings that I believe, don't quote me, but I think it was you that kicked it right back to Tara and Jamie that you wanted to see that and stay 2% under. Yeah. Um, so I think there's already steps being put in place. There's enough um, visual and um, visual recognition that this is an issue that if we don't, get language changed during town meeting for this one. I don't think that's gonna be detrimental because the concept is already out there in enough ears and minds as it is. Where is this on our priority list of advisories? I have right, um, you know, top number one in advisory right now, majority vote. Um, number two is can public have votes say in a realignment of grades between buildings? Vote three, can there be a limit mechanism for limiting large bond items? Number four, is the budget being coded? Number five, how does a tie vote get broken? Um, I would say it's a three, two or three for me. I don't know, I, I, I'm open for that though. Uh, uh, yeah, Tim? two or three and then if at your one of your regular board meetings you segue into any of these, then you know you can bring them up at that time. Well, we'll we'll talk about ways we can we can give them our advisory without necessarily taking up their time talking about them. I don't know. This is as I say after public comment, we'll talk about this because I think all of these things are things I think the board should see. They should see our list, our whole list. Whether we actually talk about all these items or not is another question. Um, uh, and, and discuss. Maybe it's a matter of what they have questions on. Um, Justine, how do you feel about priorities here? Is this a two, three for you on advisory? Yeah, I feel the same way as you, Ethan. I, I, I'm in line with what you. Okay, Charity. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. And keep in mind also, as Dina has stated before, and I think we in this group have stated, is that. There are pieces of this puzzle that even though we present it to the board in the advisory column, it doesn't mean that they have to do an amendment to the articles. Yeah. They can also just, an, they can also adopt that as a board, this is gonna be their standing process. We don't necessarily have to change an article for it to become the status quo. Got you. No, I, I we, we, we have a, a, a mission which, I realized the other day I really need to be more fluid with because it's um it's sort of our vision statement. This is our the board's job is to be the vision and then the administration and the SU to sort of act on that vision. And um this this could certainly be part of our um our articles of that, you know, our, our agreement of that. Good. Um anything else before I turn it over to some public comment? Charity, you good to go? Good. Justine, Tim, you good to move on? The public comment? Yes. 
Thank you. All right, I got my list up here. Get my pad. Uh, first on the list is Janet Whitaker. Do you have any comments for us tonight? Um, my only comment is that um, I'm really appreciative of what you're doing to to try to have it so that we don't dissolve the merger only because there are really a lot of uh, pros to the current situation. And um, as a Stockbridge resident, I just appreciate that you're working so hard and sitting in on the meetings makes me appreciate how hard you're working. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Much appreciated. Joanne Mills from Stockbridge. Do you have a further comment? Oops, shoot. I swear I'm not remuting you. I don't know what's happening. Are you there? I'm sorry. I'm sorry something technical is happening with you. Um, please feel free to cut in. Um, and once you get back on, and we'll certainly come back to you after we've moved on. Uh, Karen, Ruben. No, I'm all set. I just appreciate the due diligence that you guys are, are um, doing to, to see this through. Thank you so very much. Great. Thank you, Karen. Uh, and then I have one fourth. Oh, Joanne, you back? Can you speak? I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening for you. Somehow it's not. Do you want to try calling in? Uh, to join by phone, it's 413-825-9614. It's a long pin, but I can give it to you right now. 726-423-5926. Five nine seven. It's on the agenda, bottom of the agenda. Let's see if we got you. Oh, she left. Okay. Uh, let me move on here. Uh, four four three, star star fifteen. Please identify yourself and your town. Can you hear me? Yes. This is Rob Gardner. Hi, Rob. Uh, so I had a couple of points I'll make and I'll try to be brief. So as far as, I, as far as I can see, Ethan, um, you guys are asking to change legal voted on agreements based on what sounds to me like a lot of suspicions, fears, hypotheticals. What if this happens? What if that's, that happens? And resentments. These aren't actionable facts. Subjective feelings are not facts. After all, the Rochester voters could come up with a whole list of hypotheticals and fears based on these hypothetical and fears and, and what then. So I really question the effectiveness of your process. Secondly, the Stockbridge folks have already made their decision to pursue demerger, uh, demerger through the petition and the intent to vote on or whatnot. So it seems to me there's some considerable bad faith in trying to amend the merger agreements under the threat of the demerger vote. Uh, you know, it, it just seems unreasonable to me. It seems to me that you should cease the process or, or take everything into advisement the work you've done into advisement until after the Stockbridge and maybe Rochester votes on the demerger. And then you can have a meaningful conversation about the process, the agreements with the student-centered uh, uh, goals, seeking the best academic and financial outcomes, and not just listening to complaints. The complaints have to be heard and taken seriously, but they should be specific and actionable and based on facts and not just personal feelings about something. Finally, uh, since this is a combined board and decisions are made by Stockbridge board members that affect Rochester students, Rochester voters should be able and to be should be part of the process of electing those board members and vice versa. But this is probably why the lawyer had a problem with that suggestion in the uh, first place. And that's all I have to say tonight. Thanks for all the work you're doing. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can, Joanne. Oh, great. Thank you. All right. Well, I, I'm sorry I just missed um, Rob. I'm sure it was interesting. Um, so my only concern, and I thank you very much because I think you're working so hard 
My only concern is the difference between action and advisory. Um, I just hope that some of the things that we, that um, I just don't want it to be watered down and some of the advisory items maybe should be action, but I'm sure you'll figure it out and you'll know exactly what to do because um, so far I've been very impressed. It's just some of the, you know, if you, if you, if you say to your kid, well, you may go outside, <laughs> it's different than you must go outside. And I just hope that it's just not watered down. That's all. Um, mm -hmm. But so far, so good. Thank you so much. That's all. Very good. Um, we're now at 802 star star 38. You're, please identify yourself. Hi, it's Keith over at Stockbridge. Hi, Keith. Sorry, I missed your last meeting. Uh, First, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all. Thank you. Uh, I think um, Rob Gardner's comments were uh, excellent. Um, I think that the focus uh, needs to be as to whether or not this merge is going to stay in place before we um, go overboard on amending uh, the document. Uh, to amend a legal document is not easy, as, Ra as uh, Robert pointed out. Um, I was a little bit more focused on the uh, articles of the merger than I was on some of the topics that were touched upon by your committee, because I thought the committee was focusing on um, how the merger document and the articles were going to be amended. So I'm really not prepared to discuss some of the issues. Um, I guess my questions are... Uh, one of the concerns, I think it was at the top of your list, is realignment. Um, when I looked at the document that was ratified or voted on um, in Stockbridge, it stated, uh, I think, October 22nd, 17th. It has the stamp on it, so I'm hoping that's the proper uh, set of articles that I'm looking at. Would that be correct? I don't know off the top of my head. Somebody yes, said. yes, that's right. Thank you. Oh, okay, Thank thanks. You. So this document was drafted. I'm not, I don't know what the intent, intent was, and I'm sure none of you do, because uh, I don't think any of you are involved in drafting the document. But some of the conditions have, like Article 4A, when it talks about realignment, um, it, it's kind of unusual that this document was drafted, and it says that, you know, during the first year, that the district is fully operational. The districts will operate elementary schools, grades uh, P PK through six in each community. Um, 4B talks about the budget, which you guys touched upon. And it says, during the first year or during the 2018-19 shall not exceed spending threshold. It didn't, the language didn't say that once this district is formed, each community will have PK through six. It was like the document was drafted with looking into the future and saying, here's what we see happening, because it limited itself to the first year. And I think those articles need to be addressed because those are concerns that you have. Um, the other thing is, and maybe you can answer, Ethan, who authorizes a bond vote? Oh, and I'm, I'm not an expert at that, uh, but I believe it's the board has to put out um no we we solicit a um what's it a something like a peep not a ppe but something like that a proposal and then we uh we i believe the board then votes on it uh to put it out to bid and then it goes to a vote um but that i'm, I'm not a, i'm not expert on that at all keith so i really shouldn't be speaking to okay but, but i can find out okay but if the board has the authority to uh issue a, a bond vote, why can't the board vote to put a moratorium on bonds mm. until certain uh, issues are addressed to the uh, satisfaction of both the board and the communities? Mm -hmm. It seems that it would be under their control to do such a thing. And finally, um, when I was looking at the comments, and this relates to Article, um, I guess, 7 and you know, 11 and the whole BOE thing. Um, does the BOE keep records of what they approved and authorized for our merger? 
I don't know. Okay. Because it was disturbing to me that the attorney's answer, it says the articles of agreement which were voted on and approved by the, the electorate, electorate are the legal documents of the merger. Whatever was presented to the agency of education is irrelevant. So in other words, the way I interpret that is somebody could go before the BOE, make this presentation, BOE says, you know what, you guys have your act together, that sounds great. Then that same group can go out and say, well, you know what, here's what we're going to put out for vote. Uh, so what impact does the BOE have? It sounds like it's just a, you know, a paper tiger. Because they'll do something and there's no mechanism. They don't enforce anything. They don't look at anything. They just say, well, our hands, we're done. We voted. We're finished. So I was curious. So as, as a community member, can I go to the BOE and say, hey, guys, Look at these emails. Look at these responses. What, what, you know, what does the BOE do? I, it's a good question. <laughs> I'm writing it down. Because, you know, if, 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 you know, the BOE approves one thing and then another thing is put out to vote, the whole merger really should be dissolved just as a matter of course because it wasn't what was approved. Got it. Ethan, could I say something? Yeah, Justine. Um, just to interject for a moment there, this is a question that I did pose to Dina in the meeting, um, or it's related to a question that I did pose to Dina in the meeting in um, asking whether the Board of Education did see our actual warned articles that were to be voted on as well as what was presented. And my understanding of her response was the Board of Education did see all of the previous presentation and the warned articles before they approved our merger. So then I could actually go to the BOE and petition to see these records because they should be a matter of public record because that would give me clarification uh, and doesn't put anybody on the spot it has nothing to do with rochester has nothing to do with stockbridge it's just that uh, there seems this process seems to be flawed mm -hmm. and you know i i think it should, it's important that we see what they voted on what they approved how it differed I mean, this is really, you know, an issue I have with the BOE more than the board. I mean, you know, and now you're trying to rewrite a bunch of articles that, you know, we're three years into this. It's like reinventing the wheel. It's almost easier to revote and have a new merger than it is to do what you're doing. You're trying to fix and, and you know, do patchwork to make this work which just is going to lead to more issues a year from now. That's well, I, don't, I, have to I don't see this committee well, running as patchwork. Oh, okay, hold on a sec. Tim, I do think we have, uh, Justine, I should have probably kept this in, that I think it's important that we listen to comments, take notes. Um, um, well, Tim, do you have something concise to say? Well, well yeah. I, I, I uh, kind of resent the statement that this is patchwork when uh, this committee got together after the uh, Stockbridge Select Board uh, approved to move forward with the unmerge. So um, if I think that I don't have an, any issue with Stockbridge going forward with an unmerge, because the dissolve takes two years. Newberry voted today and it took him two years to get to that point. So we don't have to rush this thing. And there's no reason why Stockbridge can't move forward with what they're doing. If we make articles of agreement that work for everybody and we start running two buildings and educating our kids with, be with better opportunities, I think that over two years, we can show that we can do it and there won't be any final vote in Stockbridge if we fix this. If we don't fix it, both schools are going to be in big jeopardy. 
Okay, Tim, I hear what you're saying. Then, then why, do, why does the board want to have things to present so quickly uh, at the next meeting? We decided not to do that. The only thing that we were going to present was the top one, which was the equal voting, and then we were pri then we were putting things into different columns, which you you must understand that the advisory are issues that have been brought up. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying, but it was interesting that the number one item that you say you're going to bring up there seem to be differing opinions as to whether or not that was even legal to do. Mm. That is right. I not, mean, not according to our legal advice. To our no, legal advice. but it seemed that that same person, Dina, gave a different opinion, um, and there should be firm clarification. This is the third meeting of this committee. Uh, we've had well, and I and I told her we've had uh, by email. She's confirmed that it is right, and by in person at the last meeting, she confirmed it was right. So, okay, so, uh, so we have the legal right to do that, is what you're saying on the record. That's on the record. That's what I'm taking. And don't forget about the series of checks and balances involved in this. This is an advisory board that will present things to the full board, which will make decisions about what they go forward. They could say at this point with COVID and what we're dealing with and budget issues, this is not the time to bring up any of these issues. And even if they do, they're still the voters who have to choose one way or another about these issues. There are all sorts of checks and balances to what we're doing. And I believe that that's an important part of this process. So what we suggest and what we list really doesn't, you know, it's all very good. And I hear Joanne's comment that it's important that things don't get left out. But you know, this is an advisory board. We are giving advice. We are thinking and talking and thinking about issues and getting legal advice, and then we're advising our board. Good. Are you all done, Keith? Uh, yeah, I'm done. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, 802, star star 91, please. Do you have any comments? Could you identify? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you. Yeah, I'm not hearing you. Okay. I'm I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not able to make out what you're saying. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, yes. Now I can. Yes, thank you. Okay. Hi, Ethan. It's Caitlin McKentry. How are you tonight? Hi, Caitlin. Thank you. Good. So I know I'm usually the negative, angry Nancy um, about this, but I just want to say you guys are doing a fantastic job going through, listening to your debates, watching the videos of previous meetings. Um, I wish the school board worked as quickly and precisely as you guys did on issues. I feel they push things off a lot, but you guys are doing a really fantastic job about pulling these articles apart. Um, I do want to very much disagree with, with Robin Keith. I want to reiterate like what Tim said. Dissolving and redoing the articles are two, they're lengthy pro processes. They're, and they're two very separate processes. Tim's right. It's going to take time to fix the merger, but it's also going to take time to dissolve. Um, and he's right in the fact that if things get fixed, if things are, are fair, I'm sure a lot of people in Stockbridge would be comfortable with staying in the merge if things were fair. If we kept our K through six school, if we were able to, to be able to vote equally, you know, a lot of the things that you brought up, if those things get fixed, I feel that the merge could work. Um, so I just wanted to say that now my other two comments on the actual, um, article suggestions, um, is, has it been brought up or is it being considered to recommend to pay a tuition to another school if grades are moved, um, or if a school, one of the schools, obviously it would be Stockbridge because we're smaller and we can't house all the kids. Um, if Stockbridge were to close, 
would it be an option to um, have tuition paid or could it be in, in the articles that it would be an, an automatic dissolution um, since the board is in charge of moving grades and such. I think looking at paying tuition for those who are affected by either a school closure or moved grade, um, I think that should be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and for bonds, I think if there's going to be a large bond, for example, if you need to do a bond for a sprinkler repair or a new, new something, I think there should be a time limit on, so each school should get the same treatment. If there's a bond that's going to cover one major facility, either upgrade or change, then you don't necessarily have to spend the exact amount, but say, I don't know, Rochester, the roof there, they may need a new roof sometime in the future and maybe Stockbridge needs a roof repair. So get Rochester a new roof this year and then within X amount of time, either Stockbridge gets their roof repaired or a roof, a new roof. So it's even. So it's not we just take out this huge bond or this huge amount of money and send it on one school. There needs to be a plan to keep both schools maintained and updated. And I think that may be all I have. Oh, so another reason why things are coming up, why the articles are coming up now, just to say to Rob and Keith, is that they, they do need to be voted on. They need to be presented at town meeting. And that only happens once a year. So it's really important for that to occur. And that's why there's a push for it now. Um, I think that's kind of it. Great. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Much appreciated. Okay. Okay. We're going to go back. Um, it's our time here. Oh, we're going a long one here. Well, this is our, as it says, our last one. Thank you all for your comments. Um, notes have been taken for sure. Um, and 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 heard. I mean, I, I I do hear. I really do hear all the comments, both pro what we're doing here and and challenging what we're doing here. Um, uh, my general response is this is the best solution I had <laughs> when it was suggested to me, and so I'm going to try it. And it may not work, and it may be wrong headed but it's the best solution I've got in front of me. And as the board chairman, um, I'm gonna follow that. So uh, time will tell uh, who's right and who's wrong, but I, I certainly think it's a worthwhile thing to try. And uh, we'll see. But I also take an advisement, some of, your, um, some of your reasons for what we're doing. Okay, um, I'd love to wrap this up, um, but I don't wanna do it before we're, we're, we feel um, clear, I think, um, you know, we've got, I don't really want to have another meeting next Monday, but um, that would be the way to cut it short to really sort of sit with this, get some more feedback. Um, and, but I, I think, you know, we've got a lot to present and I just want to, I don't think we should curtail our presentation because the board is busy. <laughs> I don't think that's ever a good reason. I think we have our our stuff is as important. Um, it goes to the heart of this whole, you know, this whole district existing. But I'd like to sort of hear your take, uh, Tim, Justine, Charity, on how you think we should present this. Who wants to go first? Uh, Charity. Um, you know, I think we've come up with a list of what we see as action items and advisory items and pending items. I think if we build a spreadsheet, which I think you've been doing as we go, 
Mm -hmm. um, if we present that with clear, concise language to explain each of those items and where we feel we're at with it and our reasoning behind it, then I think we don't really, I think we're at that point where we've got as much legal understanding as we can for the items that, that we know we have outstanding questions on that with what we've got, we're ready to present this to the full board with the understanding that there are pieces of the puzzle that still need clarification. And some of those are some of our big ticket items in order to make other big ticket items attainable. Um, I guess that's where I'm at. Um, I don't Do think that's the end what we're doing. No. I think no. we just transition into a different phase of now we need to be available to answer questions to the full board and make sure we all stay on the same page. The bottom line with all of this is this is a subcommittee and it was our task, you know, the goal I originally set out for this group to do was to present options to the board. And I think we're at that point and all we can actually do is present it to the board and it's in the board's hands. We just have to present it as clearly as we can to make them understand where we're coming from and the value of what we're presenting to them. So uh, just, just a, a pure technical thing. Um, uh, I'm hearing that you think we should basically read our list to them uh, and then answer yeah. questions. And that like number one on the action list should probably have the wording of the amendment as we read it. If we get clarification on that in time to present it to them, I know we're up against a timeline because that meeting is what next Tuesday. Yes. Um, and we're already at Tuesday with Thursday, Friday kind of being yeah. probably a, a wash. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I don't want to see us wait longer because we know that there's work that the board's going to have to do to get this ready to warn by the end of January. Yeah. If, um, if, they, if they decide to go ahead with that, yes. Right, exactly. Because bottom line, it's, it's the board's decision of if any, all or none of this will move forward. Gotcha. Um, but I think given time constraints, like we need to make this as, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, fluent. <laughs> what? What's the word, Tim? Fluent. Fluid. <laughs> uh, no, I was, I, I want this to look as enticing as possible for them to agree to move forward with what we want to push to town meeting. And, and the future ones as well. I want them to see the value of what this group has done and that we've got backing from all these community members who've been, you know, stating that, you know, this is, this is a good start to fix this and fix the, uh, maybe too strong a word, the animosities and, but you got to move forward to fix it. And if we present them with all of this in the proper manner and they move it forward, then it's step one. And then we just keep stepping forward. Good. Justine. I agree I, with uh, presenting the list. I think our list is a lot more organized than we might think it is because we are in a rabbit hole. So I think we've organized some um, very good key points that are straightforward. I think maybe uh, offering the draft of the amendment might be a little too soon. I think we should get all of the advisement that we can um, first by approaching um, Dina with um, Article 11 and her interpretation and then going beyond that if that's what we're going to do. Um, but I think that our list is is well thought out and is going to be straightforward and easy to present it just in the form that it's in. Uh, Tim? Yeah, I would agree with that. I'd present the list and, uh, you know, I'm interested to see what the board has to say. It's really up to uh, the board if how, how this works out. If they think that the original articles of agreement and the presentation to the BOE were good, 
for both towns, then, you know, that's the six person decision to make. And really we have nothing to say about it. We can advise them that that's not necessarily what the majority of the people think. I had some pretty good conversations with people in Rochester today, and I'm not sure that um, the, the definition of insanity comes to mind. If you're going to listen to one person and keep saying the same thing and expect a different outcome. Um, well, here's a, here's a very practical question. Um, who should present this to the board? Me, Charity, Justine, Tim? I believe it's a point of order issue. I think because you are you or Justine are board members, I, I'm reaching out on a limb because again, my experience is with private entity board and not public board, but I believe there's a point of order issue that because the two of you are board members of the larger board, it mm -hmm. needs to be presented by one of the two of you. And technically we probably were supposed to name one of the two of you as the chair of this subcommittee. Oh, and I, think I, I think I took oh. that on. Yeah. Okay, so then I believe it is you that are, whoever took that role, you mm -hmm. would have to submit that on behalf of the subcommittee. Correct. But I, I did, um, um, oh, no, I didn't. I was gonna send Amy Wilt, my vice chair, a, a message that I would certainly step down as the board chair during this presentation if that was the case, if you want me to present it, um, uh, so that she would be chairing you know, that section of it, because um, I think that would be a little confusing for me to be the board chairman of the RSED. Um, um, uh, what do we, if, 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 do you want to do it, Justine, though? I, th I mean, that's somehow feels, I talk a lot anyway, so I'm going to be talking all night that, on Tuesday night. Um, I'm not sure that I, I'm not sure. Not necessarily. I would <laughs> vote for you. I feel like you're, um, you've been um, doing this great thing of mirroring back everything we say to, to us. Like whoever, whoever addresses something, you kind of like flush it out and mirror it back. And, and I think that you've kind of flushed it all out already in a, in a great way. And I think probably you're most prepared to present because of that. But I'm happy to do it from from what we have worked on already. If you feel like that would be more effective. No, I'm I'm really at the will of the board. I mean, I'm I'm happy to present it. It's certainly something I'm you know uh, presenting is is something I'm very comfortable with. Um, uh, I I would want to make sure that we you know, all signed off on the list. And maybe the last thing we'll do tonight is just read through it one more time, um, uh, just to make sure we're all clear and get, um, you know, cause commenting on it afterwards, I never got a clear yes or no, whether we could do that. But I, um, I, I just think in general, that's probably the best thing to do is to uh, get it clear tonight. Um, Charity, how do you feel about that? Do you care who presents? Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with either of you presenting it. Um, I do question, I do, is there anything wrong with it being typed up, sent, you know, presented to the four of us and just giving our approval that we understand it? I know for me, seeing something is mm -hmm. gonna give me more of a chance to rattle off questions versus hearing you say it out loud. Let's... Um... I see. I think that the big issue is I understand the public meeting law, and I can get confirmation from Jamie tomorrow or, or, or Dina. Is the idea of discussion, and the, the idea of discussion is what really has to happen in the public forum. But the idea of us um, editing a document, um, I don't know. As I say, I put out uh, questions out to two people and never got an answers back. I could follow up more on that. It would be really useful if over this break before next Tuesday, the four of us could put our two cents in um, all, looking at this document again. Um, can we, do we wanna take the chance of assuming that that's okay, as long as there isn't a lot of email discussion about it, that we just- I, let, so. I'd rather not have email discussion about it. Let's do it. Let's do it in public and be transparent. Yeah, okay. You know, uh, yeah, no, I hear you. 
I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, Mark, just to clarify, I wasn't saying that we don't read through it tonight. I was just saying, can we get a like a a copy of it sent to the, us in the final in its final oh, form yeah. as well? Absolutely. What I'll what I'll read tonight and whatever we finish tonight, I will send out to all of you. Um, and that and I think that's that's a good good way to go. Okay. Um, well, um, so thumbs up, thumbs down. I will present. Yes. Yes, Tim. Yes. Good. Okay. I will recuse myself from the board chairman at that time. We will do it. All right. So this is the hot topics article. I don't, I may, I don't know if we, we may want to change that title. We'll see. Hot topics. Sounds a little like uh, disco down from the seventies. Um, action item, action item 1A, change how representatives are nominated and elected amendment proposal. Uh, I, action item 1B, article 11 is confusing. Is the warned document, and this was, I, I don't have this written quite right. Is the warned document the legal document and does article 11 contradict that? Can we get legal clarification on this? Um, and again, how you phrase that one is is one to maybe work on a little bit. Um, and then action item two, set in process regular evaluation of merger and evaluation of articles committees to create standards and questions and has a report due to the public on a regular basis, one year, three year, et cetera. All right, um, advisory. Number one, problem. Majority vote is always unfair to the smaller town and votes. Uh, I'd say votes twice. Transparent mechanism suggested. Uh, number two, can the public have a vote say in realignment of grades between buildings? Um, I don't understand what I have after that, sorry. Um, it, but it says advisory. Uh, number three, amendment that board must propose only budgets to stay under the threshold. Number four, can there be a limit mechanism for limiting large bond items at one campus or other before we get to a more equitable voting process in place? Can we prevent a one-sided large bond vote? Sorry, I think I put them both in the wrong. That should just Equitable voting should be in action items, correct? Yes, number one. Or were you referring to the piece of the, that where we want it, we put, I think we put it in that it needed legal advice about a, a weighted voting and the legalities around that Oh, that's right. So that's right. The, uh, so the because we, we broke it up into two things. There was a solution. Wait, let me look at this again. Maybe word it as um, weighted voting legal issues or legal capabilities or I don't know, but maybe say weighted voting because it just sounds different than the, the other voting issue. OK, I see where we're at now. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to send this to you. I'm going to send what I have to you guys right now. I think it's the only way to do this. Because otherwise, it's just like uh, my writing was fast and this may be the late one where we get this right or get this closer to what we want. Whoops, sorry. Um, Okay. Okay, it is sent. Hopefully we'll get it. Uh, 
Oh, I see what it is now. Okay. I, um, I had in before the, what we were looking at before was, can there be a, can there be a voting, uh, how do you vote on bonds? And then it was before we get a more equitable voting process in place, can we prevent more large one-sided bond votes? That is a legal question. Um, did you get it? Everybody get it? Charity yet? Tim, did you get it? Uh, Ethan, the, art, the document I got to from you just now is the same document you sent at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Let's save this. Uh, save as. Yep. That's why I, I didn't save it as. Thank you. Uh, second. Second draft it'll have on it. Thank you. Ah, uh, technology. If we were in person, this would be a dry erase board. Just send it. And can you go get this off the printer for me, please? We are a mile apart, Ethan. We could have walked it to each other quicker. <laughs> I know. It's all downhill pretty much for me, too. I could have zoomed right down there. I know that's the part that crazy, you know, the, the internet, you know, it, it really could be going to Boston or DC or Seattle and then going to you a mile down the road. Yeah, but I got it this time. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Okay. All right, so this, yeah, this will be a, a late one. Let's, let's, um, I just, uh, just one change I just did is I just added in change how school board representatives are nominated and elected, amendment proposal. Yeah, let's see how that one goes. Yeah. If, if that one goes smoothly, let's go on to number two. And not necessarily on next Tuesday night, but <laughs> let's see how the full board is feeling about this mm -hmm. committee. Um, I just added in um, in 1B, Article 11 is confusing and conflicting, and, um, and we're going to get legal clarification on that, hopefully before next Tuesday. Uh, I think our, the number two is, as I said it, sometimes I was rewriting a little bit as I was reading to you. All right, problem majority vote is always unfair to the smaller town. I think we can just say smaller town. I'll probably, you know, and I'll, I, I, I will do a little bit transparent mechanism. Okay. Then two, can the public have votes say in realignment of grades between buildings? Get rid of it as advisory.
Uh, number three, the amendment that board must propose only budgets to stay under the threshold. Before we get more equitable voting process in place, can we prevent a one-sided large bond vote? Legal question. Then number five, budget coded at the expense level to reveal accounting at each campus intent to reveal spending equity in real time at both campuses. Uh, I'll take off advisory because it's in that now. How does a tie vote get broken in school board votes advisory? What if a board member is missing? Can I ask a question on that one? Yep. I don't know if this pertains to open, like this type of board. I know in private entity board, any board member not able to be present can give their proxy vote to another board member as long as they write down what their vote is going to be as documented proof that the person isn't changing their vote. I, I don't know if that's an option in this type of board. I don't either, um, but I will ask about it. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, you don't always know when the vote's gonna happen on a, um, I mean, sometimes with budget and stuff like that. On uh, a pending list, sorry, we have uh, two. No, oh, that didn't work, I'm sorry. There we go, three. Doesn't wanna give me three, come on. There we go. Uh, what are the consequences of the property dispersal article on the high school transfer to town Rochester? That's pending. Can we vote by percentages in each town as opposed to majority pending with legal advisory? Can the conditions of the merger that were mentioned in the planning period but not voted on be reviewed to see if there are important elements to reintroduce to the agreements? Good. What do we think about this? Are we, are we done? I'm trying to figure out if we missed something because I have 11 noted on my original cheat sheet I was writing on, but I don't have that many on here. Well, we split some. One, two, three, four, five, six. I, have, I actually have more. Well, including pending and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, I have, including 1A and 1B. Should I read through them one more time? Make sure we got everything? I think the one I'm missing is the bond one. Did we put on here anything about the bond item, which was number seven? Uh, yes, it's before we get a more equitable voting process in place, can we prevent a one-sided large bond vote, number four under advisory, legal question. After number three, amendment that board must propose only budgets that stay under the threshold and five of the budget coded. You might want to find out how the moratorium works. That's not a bad idea. It might be easier to do that for the time being. And, uh, you know, I don't know enough about moratoriums or how they even get handled, but mm -hmm. Justine might be able to answer some of that. It might be a question for the League of School Boards. Go ahead, Justine, if you have anything. Uh, I don't, I can't answer that right now, yeah. but I mean, yeah. especially uh, with regards to um, schooling. Okay, so where are we? Do we feel charity? How we how we doing? Yeah, I think we just need to I I know this is what we can't do. We can't have an outside set of eyes look at this and then reflect back to us what they think is or isn't explanatory. So I think I guess I'm at the point where this is as close as we're going to get to giving the full board our thoughts of what we're what we've got and 
with every with all of us being present, if they have any questions, we can explain if it doesn't seem clear to them. But I, I do, I think we're at that point where we present and if they don't like it, we figure out why, you know, and keep moving forward. Justine? Um, I just look, scanned through my um, draft minutes, essentially my notes, and I, I can't see anything else that is missing from this document. I have one edit for one word in number three under advisory, propose instead of proposes. But other than that, I am a, in agreement with Charity. I think this is a this is what we propose. Okay. Um, oh, this is what we proposes. Yeah. <laughs> On the noses of toeses. Yes, good. Tim, any comments? I agree. And then after your meeting next week, you can let us know if you want to continue or whether you don't want to continue. Oh, I'm, I mean, personally already, I think this should continue. Um, um, I think, I think we'll, I think we'll get some marching orders from the board, uh, how they want to go forward. Um, I think we may personally just thinking about communication. I think I may need at least a second sentence for 1A, um, just because I think we need to say something about local representatives that the local town votes for its local representatives. We have an amendment for you to look at, something like that, just so they have a little more idea of what we're talking about there. Um, Can we just put in intention is that each town will nominate and elect its own representation? Yep. I agree with that. I think that's what we should write. Yep, nominate and elect. There. And, and then and then you're going to have to uh, talk about how that works going forward after this year because it yeah. will have to be uh, an Australian ballot so that you can know between the two towns. Well, I'm going to Australia. Um, how I'm going to say how well uh, I was going to say how voted how voted is a concern Australian ballot or not. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of issues with that, obviously, that we need to bring up to them. But do uh, we actually need to do that in this document? Can we just no. say, yeah. see, see attached suggested language from Dina? Mm -hmm. How do yeah. we feel about, how do we feel about the idea of sending this out to the board before the meeting? Go ahead. I think if we're in agreement when we before we ha end the meeting tonight of what this document's going to look like, by all means, send it out to them. Give them as much time as we can to let them look at it and present questions in advance so we can at least have an idea of do they have specific concerns, do they have specific con questions, and but tell when, them, get them ready. Great. Yeah, preparation is always – it's also going to make things smoother, faster. I think if they're if they're on it as opposed to all this coming at them right at the beginning, good. Um, I'm, then I just added the words um, in the one A. We have an amendment. Have an amendment proposal. Just so they know. So change how school board represent representatives are nominated and elected. We have an amendment proposal. Uh, our intention, intention, intervention, our intention is that each town will nominate and elect their own representatives. Good. Okay, so then Article 11 is confusing and conflicting. Is the Warren document the legal document, and does Article 11 contradict that? Can we get legal clarification on this? I, I think we should put something that this underscores the <laughs> this underscores everything because <laughs> it kind of does is what legal document or this underscores the legal basis for the merger. Is that I guess maybe it, I'm being too simple about it, but is our question do the 
voted on articles stand alone if article 11 is removed because that's kind of the question do they voted on articles stand alone if article 11 is removed okay that would be a lot easier and if, if that was the case well i'm you know i don't know i have a feeling that there's something in there that's got to say the board approved this the bo you know the boe approved this but yeah i mean it, it's a pretty no-brainer i mean if i'm not a legal scholar but i can look at that now that you point it to me and it's like this is really confusing yeah okay good I put that question in there. Uh, number two said in process, regular evaluation of merger and evaluation of articles committee that creates standards and questions and has a report due to the public on a regular basis, one year, three years, et cetera. I think that sounds good to me. I'll look for your hands or, yeah, you're good. Okay. I'm good. Yep. Advisory problem. Majority vote is always unfair to the smaller town. Now, do we want to recommend, can there be a trans, can there be, can this be fixed? What do we want to say? So I feel like it's always unfair to the smaller town. Are we asking if this the voting can be based on percentages? Well, like, I do, I, that's we one not, suggestion. I think we're asking the broader question of how can we deal can, with? Yeah, can, we, can, yeah. can this I, and that's why I put it. Can this be fixed? Can this be? Yeah, can this be fixed? Yeah. Yeah. Can we add to what you've already got? I mean, I think if we took what you've already got and then after like the next item it, next to uh, after the colon is are there legal options to weighted voting i don't know i like that what legal. are or what are our legal options or even more simple is weighted voting legal <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Is weighted voting legal? I mean, it may not be. It may be that this is the way it is. And W E I. Did I spell that right? Weighted. Yes, weighted voting legal. Okay, good. Um, and that, Justine, you're good. Is waiting voted legal? Is that good? Tim, you're good with that? Is waited? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Can the public have a vote say in realignment of grades between buildings? Question mark. That one seems pretty clear to me. Do I have a thumbs up? Yep. Tim? Yep. Amendment that board must propose only budgets that stay under the threshold. We're good with that, Tim. Yep. Uh, before we get a more equitable voting process in place, can we prevent a one-sided large bond vote? A legal question, moratorium, question mark. Uh, I'm gonna just, I think I'm going to say is moratorium is a is a moratorium voted by the board an answer a solution so it now reads before we get a more equitable voting process in place can we um that's sort of assuming we're going to go on that road I don't know um yeah the before uh, but before we get a more equitable voting process in place, can we prevent a once-sided large bond vote? 
legal question. Is a moratorium, moratorium voted by the board a solution? Question mark. We could say should should we move toward a change in the voting process during that period of time is a moratorium maybe instead of a well i want to i want to keep i want to keep the focus on the bond because that's what this question's about is about the bond along one large sided bond vote right i just meant instead of saying before we get a more equitable that's you know assuming that like you were saying during really it's about during that in during that process when it's not fully decided how we're going to vote for it i agree with justine the way the sentence opens up it's suggesting it's a done deal that we're going to vote yeah. to change voting yeah this which is... we don't have that we don't have a confirmation on that yet yeah exactly so Got a um, few months um um Supposing we get a more equi or well, it's still about before. Can we use in lieu of? Oh, I like that. In lieu of a more equitable voting process, can we place, can we prevent a one-sided large bond vote? Legal question. Is a moratorium voted by the board a solution? Okay, good. Uh, thumbs up on that? Yeah, Tim, did you hear that? Yeah, that's good. Good, okay, number five, budget coded at the expense level to reveal accounting at each campus intent to reveal spending equity in real time at both campuses. Thumbs up on that? From Charity, Justine, what are you thinking? Uh, uh, I wanted to say, um, I, I Janet Whitaker did make a comment during our earlier, prior to the public comment. I know she didn't say it, but um, she said that the, there was a process going on already that allowed for this coding. So I don't know, um, Maybe we could say, I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I'm just not sure if the wording is correct, if it's already happening. I don't know if we know it's already happening. Do we want to put some note? This may already be happening. But... Yeah, I think so. Uh, this may, you know, may already be happening, could, but could it be made more transparent or uh, clearly represented or something like that to reveal the accounting? So can I say something? Yep. <laughs> um, I know that this is happening. Janet has confirmed it at this <laughs> meeting and at the last meeting. Yeah. And I've already had conversations that she knows I've had uh, that this is happening and has been happening pretty much all school year um, and possibly before that. And it goes right in line with the Jamie really pushing for some changes mm -hmm. SU wide. I think my bigger push for why I want it in here is that I, and this is completely me personally, so please nobody on this meeting think I'm speaking on behalf of this group or the board. Um, me personally, I have pushed for almost two years now at various meetings that documentation presented to the public at meetings um, be done in a manner that is more visually presented in a manner that everyone can understand it not just those people who understand massive spreadsheets of accounting um one of the reasons i've pushed this is that i really i apologize i'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus i really need the board to start understanding that this stuff is available to you and it's a matter of working with the tools you've got and using it in a manner that you can present to the public to make it easier for everyone to understand things. Um, it's going to make it easier and alleviate some of the repeated questions that have a lot of contention on them at various meetings and spending time 
going over the same exact question three times in one meeting and at every single meeting. Um, so me pushing this one isn't just for getting it, making it, asking for it to happen at the SU level or the school yet level, but at the board level as well, and having all, all three of those parties work together to present to the public all of that information as well. It's a tool that I don't believe is being used to its full advantage. Can you give me, can you give me some example, Charity? I mean, I think this is something to talk about later just because I am, you know, it, it's, it's, we're at three hours, over three hours now. Um, I'd love to see, as board chairman, I'd love to see examples of what you mean. Cause, cause I, I would it. love to tell you that I could give you an example, but I've never seen it with my own two eyes because it's not the type of document the board presents to us at meetings. That's the problem. If I were able to sit down with Tara or actually probably Janet could show me mm -hmm. and see some of those pieces of the puzzle, I'm, I could probably quickly pick out, this is gonna help you explain this type of money spending. This would help you explain and give answers quicker. Um, could I do that for you? Yes, probably. Would it take me a little bit of legwork to understand the books? Yes, because I've never dug my head into them other than the board, the budget that we get to see a very quick snapshot of. Um, well, here's what I, 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 I think I want to move on. I just also yes. my, my computer is at at ten percent, and um, I can't find my church cord. Um, not that I want to rush us, but I just want to make sure I can stay on here. Um, let's 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 talk about this. Let's talk about this some more because I think it's very much a part of um, how I I approached doing the annual report last year with more explanation, and I think we can go a lot farther with that. Um, number six: How does a tie vote get broken in a school board vote? Uh, what if a member is missing? Um, we just want to talk about that. Um, and then we have our, our three pending list. What are the consequences of a property dispersal article on the high school transfer to town of Rochester? Pending. Can we vote by percentages in each town as opposed to a majority? Pending with legal advisory. And number three, can the conditions of the merger that were mentioned in the planning period but not voted on be reviewed to see if there are important elements to reintroduce to the agreements? Are we good with those three? Yes. Um, they're not numbered on the sheet that you spent that you sent us. Can you just number the number two oh. and number three under pending? Yeah. And then number one is what is the consequence of property dispersal? Number two is can we vote by percentages? And number three is can the conditions of the merger that were mentioned? And then the only other question I have is up on number six in advisory. Um, do you want to put the word proxy vote question mark? Uh, yes, thank you. And then I'm so, good with that. So, Ethan, I think we should meet again Monday because you've got some legal answers that you should know before going in on Tuesday, and you might as well address them to the public Monday night before you before you uh, go to the board on Tuesday. I know it's another meeting for you two, but no, I, it I think it's going to save you some time in the end. How do I mean it? It, it does the job thoroughly. That's what I think we want. It's it's getting late, and I, I don't feel like we're, we're we're not as you said. That was our standard is to be a hundred percent on this before we we left it, and I don't think we're there. So, um, do we want to uh, do? Hopefully, if the answers are clear, it won't be that we've done a lot. Most of the legwork tonight, I think, for what we're presenting. Um, so, what do we feel about meeting again Monday? at 6.30, and I will warn it tomorrow so that it gets out. I am not available. I'm committed to a standing oh, executive right. board meeting. That's right. And Unfortunately, then Tuesday, we had this, this problem left with that, yeah. Um, how, about, how about Sunday at four o'clock? It gets dark at three. I could do that. If, uh, Je Justine, I know. I'm not sure about Sunday right now. Um, 
if we kept I, it to it. Uh, oh no, I just don't know if I, I don't well, know what's going on. The other thing is about Sunday. <laughs> I know. Is I'm not. I'm not sure I'm going to get legal answers by then. Right. Uh, yeah, that would be my concern. <laughs> you'll you'll get them at five thirty Monday afternoon. Have an well, hour to look yeah. at them. So I I want to know how it might how our list is going to change if we have legal answers to the sections that don't have the legal answers. Wouldn't we just present the legal answer in that spot? Yes. So I I mean I can see that we could share that prior to, with everyone, but I don't see Good how. As I know. how decision for the presentation is going to change once those blanks are filled. Right. Uh, and, and that is true. It's just a matter of whether people are going to say that we didn't do that first before you went into the board meeting or not. And you know, I think we've got plenty to give to the board and it will be interesting to see what the outcome of that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I turned off my camera just to see if I can get a little more power out of this. I, I'm surprised how fast it went. Um, um, yeah, I don't think it's going to work for us to meet again. I just don't see how we're going to find a, a place for that. Okay. Um, I agree with Justine. I don't think that there's a, a heavily weighted enough reason not to proceed and present this to the board. I think, I mean, are any... Obviously, you and Ethan and Justine are going to be a part of the board piece of it. I mean, Tim, do you have any intention of not being a part of any other board conversations with this? I mean, I know oh, I don't. Wow. I intend to stay involved. So I think anything that comes after that meeting or shortly before, we're all going to still be available to keep pushing through this. Mm -hmm. I agree. Good. Okay. Then I think. I think we're done for tonight. Um, Second. And, and I will, uh, I'll put this uh, final document out. And if there can be, there need to be little edits before Sunday. I don't, before next Tuesday, I don't think that's a problem. I will let you know about any new information I receive. Um, and other than that, we will next convene at the ARSA meeting on Tuesday night. Um, what I, just because I'm running out of time. Do we need to schedule another meeting at this time or should we wait and I'll contact you after the board meeting next Tuesday? I think we will, I, I plan to have another one. Um, it, should we say the week after? Sure. The Tuesday after the board meeting? Uh, Not I, I, I can't do Tuesday that week. But Mondays, Mondays better for you? That week, yeah. Charity? That's fine with me. So that's what, the 10th? Uh, the 10th, the Monday 11th. the 10th. The 11th? The 11th, yep. The 11th at 6.30. That'll be our next meeting. Um, and then, yeah, I think that'd be a good time. We'll know a lot. We'll have heard back, hopefully, some great res good responses. We'll know where to go forward from there. Okay. Good. So our next meeting is scheduled uh, January 11th at 6.30 virtual. And I believe I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Good work. I everybody. make a motion we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> good work tonight, everybody. Long, too. Thank long, you. Long, but really, really good. Thank um, you.